proceeding. What you will see during proceedings is transitions from one member to another to various officers and to members of the public. As you can appreciate, this is a new technology which we are trialling as a city council. So we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding as we seek to work our way through the applications before us today. In practical terms, I'll shortly be confirming with individual members on the committee to test their connections and confirm they can see and be heard by everyone present. In terms of how the meeting will be run, all participants are asked to keep the microphones on mute throughout unless a question is to be asked by a member of the committee, in which case the member will just request it to unmute your microphone briefly to indicate you want to ask a question and will then put you on screen fully. In terms of the process, we'll go through each of the applications in turn. We will then have a presentation from the applicant, which will take up a full screen display while the applicant's voiceover will continue. And I would ask applicants and agents to indicate next slide clearly so my colleagues can ensure the slide transitions occur easily. In terms of objectors, there is up to three minutes allowed per objector addressing committee and we'll move from objector to objector, depending on how many are registered for that specific item of business. In terms of addressing committee, obviously for members of the public, the only opportunity is if you're a registered speaker and a number are already present and welcome to join this morning's meeting. As each speaker concludes, we'd ask you to remain on briefly to allow opportunity if members of the committee wish to ask any questions of you. What will then happen once we've dealt with speakers, we'll move into the relevant case officer and then the ultimate determination of the application based on a resolution of the committee subject to a voting process, which will be conducted individually, name by name through the members of the committee. As long as everyone is clear with that, I'm now going to move and just verify with the individual the members that we can all be clearly seen. So moving firstly to the chair, can you unmute your microphone and confirm that you can see us and hear us correctly? Could you just, just repeat that please, Trish? Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you, Chair. Next, I will take Councillor Cummings. Councillor Cummings, if you could please unmute your microphone. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I can see everybody. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Councillor Hanson, if you could just unmute your microphone, please, and confirm you can see and hear us okay. Just repeat that, please, so we can, can hear. You'll need to repeat that, please. Uh, you still appear to be muted. Everybody. That's thank you, Councillor. If you could remute yourself, please, I'll move on to the next colleague, Councillor Thompson, who I will pin to the screen now. Councillor Thompson, if you could please unmute your microphone and confirm if you can see and hear us correctly. Um, yes, I can see you. Um, I can hear you, but you break up quite a lot. OK, noted. Thank you. And again, if anyone else struggles with break up in terms of members of the committee, please could you say and we will briefly repeat what's been said. So for purposes of clarity, thank you. If you can mute your microphone again. Thank you, Helen. Councillor Kennedy, if you could unmute your microphone, please. Uh, can you confirm if you can see and hear us OK? Yes, President, correct. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. We'll now move on to Councillor Lavelle. I'll just pin you to the screen and then could you just unmute your microphone and confirm you can see and hear us. Morning, everyone. Absolutely fine. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Juarez, I'm moving to you next. I'm just going to pin you to the screen and can I ask that you unmute your microphone and confirm you can see and hear us. Hi everybody, I Thank can you. hear you. Hi everybody, I can hear you and I can see you all fine. Thank you. We will now move to Councillor Marat. If I can find you on my list. Councillor Marat, you should be coming on screen now. If you could just unmute and confirm you can see and hear us. Everything's fine, Michael. See everyone, hear everyone. 
Thank you, Councillor Marat. I will now move to Councillor Conception. If you could unmute and confirm you can see and hear us. Morning, everyone. I can see and hear everyone fine. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I'll now come over to Councillor Sharon Ross. Councillor Ross, can you unmute your device and confirm you can see and hear us? At this point, I'm just going to move off Councillor Ross. I'll come back to Councillor Ross in a moment. Councillor Spurrell, I'm going to pin you to the screen now. Can you unmute your mic and just confirm that you can see and hear us? Yeah, I can see and hear you fine. Thanks. Thank you. That's excellent. And I will try going back to Councillor Ross now. OK, I'll come back to Councillor Ross later. Uh, I think for now, we will now move into our items of business today. First of all, in terms of apologies for absence, we have apologies from Councillor Steve Radford. Do we have any further apologies from members? Based on my record of attendance, we don't at this stage. In terms of declarations of interest from members, do members have any to declare? If so, please unmute your mic now and state clearly what your interest is and to which item it relates. No declarations. I have no urgent items of business to report for today's meeting. So with that in mind, I will now move us over to our first item of business, which for purposes of clarity for all present, that is item number three on the agenda, the former Hondo supermarket at numbers five to nine, Upper Duke Street, Liverpool one in Riverside Ward. And I will bring the chair in to now introduce the various speakers that we have on today. Chair, if you could unmute your microphone, please. Right, so for item three, the Hondo supermarket, um, I have in my chair's note that we have an agent who's pre-registered, who's going to be giving us a presentation of up to five minutes. I think maybe the name's at the very end of all of this, so I've got to flip to the very end of my No, No, that's in a separate list. Sorry, I'll get the separate list up now. Yes, so the speaker is Michael Lampard. If he would like to present to us now, please. Mr Lampard, if you care to unmute your microphone, please. I have Thank done, you. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask my colleague to now display a PowerPoint and share it on screen for everyone to view, and then your time will start. So just bear with us briefly while we enable that feature. It's on now. So, Mr Lampard, if you'd like to make a start. OK, thank you very much. So uh, thank you for inviting me to speak. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for arranging this meeting. It uh, what must be very difficult, uh, but the technology seems to be working, which is great. Thank you. So uh, Fusion, uh, I've obviously we've been developing the scheme on Upper Duke Street and uh, I'm Michael Lampard from Castorfin and Wright. We are Fusion's architects. Uh, Fusion are providers of purpose built student accommodation and they've developed many successful schemes across the UK. And we have been fortunate to have worked with Fusion on many of their schemes over the last nine years. Uh, Fusion provide homes for students that respond specifically to local needs. And this scheme offers a mix of unit types, styles and sizes supported by quality learning spaces and external and internal amenities. Um, the site on Upper Duke Street is a fantastic redevelopment opportunity and it provides an excellent location for student accommodation. We understand the site has been identified as a redevelopment opportunity for over 15 years and we've worked closely with your officers to gain their support and we believe this is the right approach. It's an opportunity to create a high quality building providing homes and one befitting of its location in the Rope Walks conservation area and the Knowledge Quarter. Can we have the next slide please? Mr. Lampard, is that the correct slide? slide? Yeah, can we yes, have the next, have it next one? It's here. We have okay. it. Okay, I can only see a site plan at the moment. It I can seems to be slide number three that we're seeing now. 
but we did have slide number two up before. Okay, we... sorry, thank you. Okay, so uh, we've worked closely with your officers, uh, Barbara Kirkbride and Sam Campbell, to develop what we believe to be a piece of architecture that understands its surrounding topography and townscapes constraints with an appropriate scale, form and quality of materials that will enhance the city. The existing building contributes little to the area and creates poor spaces and relationships to existing buildings and streets, uh, as you've uh, read in the officer's report. The rope walked SPD specifically identifies uh, the site as an enhancement opportunity and, and, and uh, to help the negative impact of the current building. Uh, through the design, design process, we have tested a number of design configurations, as I think was shown on the first slide. Um, which and our current scheme is a significant reduction to the initial scheme we discussed with uh, Barbara and Sam, um, and we believe that this is this is creating an excellent opportunity. Uh, our scheme has developed to respect the existing scale and a detailed analysis. Uh, so those are the uh, the scale the scale diagrams there you're seeing on the screen there. So you can see between Figure A and Figure B is the changes from the uh, originally submitted scheme and our current scheme. Um, along with Paduke Street, the buildings are st step up to reflect the rising topography to the Liverpool Cathedral, which is a characteristic scene in adjoining streets where buildings rise incrementally with the levels. We've created an active frontage to the Chinatown Square, which will further help to activate the public realm. And the ground floor spaces will also be visible here to further enhance the setting. Uh, we've designed the building to go to a strong corner to Roscoe Street. Um, and reinstate a familiar building line which is seen elsewhere in the conservation area. We've also created some defensible space around the development to support street level living spaces. Can we just have the, the next slide? Thank you. Uh, so along Back Knight Street we've tested a number of configurations to in help improve the existing setting. Here we have visually widened the existing street by placing development away from the existing site boundary and introduced defensible landscape space which will provide uh, it helped to improve visual amenity and provide a buffer between the two buildings. Our current scheme has been amended to reduce the scale on Back Knight Street, a change from the initial design, and we've added directional windows to our plans to reduce overlooking. And we believe the additional surveillance created along Back Knight Street will help to improve uh, the, the space and the streetscape. Uh, can you have the, the next slide, please? And the next one after that. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this slide illustrates uh, the view from Chinatown Square and the approach uh, and the visual impact. Uh, throughout this process, we've liaised very closely with uh, heritage officers, etc. Um, and we believe we've produced a, a, an excellent scheme. Uh, can we have the final slide, please? Okay, so you've seen the visuals for our development, and we believe this will be a welcome addition to the city and further help to secure talented students to local universities. We've worked hard with your officers who have challenged us regularly throughout the process to produce a piece of design worthy of their recommendation. Uh, this is why we also believe we re received the support of Heritage England, Historic England, and there have been no objections from either your Heritage or Highways team. Uh, Fusion would like to thank you for uh, inviting us to speak and uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions from members of the planning committee? No. Well, no. That, oh, Emily, is that you asking to speak? Uh, it's uh, it's Myrna. Uh, Myrna. Okay. If you'd like to give your question to Michael Lampard. Yeah. Um. The um. The scheme says uh, that it's going to be between four and six stories high. Uh, previously, it was going to be nine stories. Um. So. Um. It says between four and six. Um, well, I'm glad that the it, you know it's not going to be nine, but it's still kind of uh, on on my uh, documents that I see. It still just says between four and six story stories high. Can the uh, representative um, make it clear how many stories it's the the project is going to be? Okay, so um, along Upper Duke Street. Um, facing as you, as you step down to the Chinatown Square, the building steps from five stories on the corner of um, Roscoe Street and uh, Upper Duke Street, stepping down to six stories as you get closer. Because of the topography of the site, there's almost a level change in the building. So it actually goes from 
six on the lower part of the site nearest to the Chinatown Square towards Berry Street, five storeys on the corner of Roscoe Street, and as it moves towards Back Knight Street, it reduces further to four storeys. Uh, thank you uh, for your response. I get it now. I have kind of been in that area and I do realise that the ground level is, um, it changes somewhat from the corner further down uh, it, it Barry does. Street. It does, yeah. yeah. And the existing building has quite a significant basement under it as well. So uh, there's quite a lot of level change. And I think both Back Knight Street and Upper Duke Street are quite, are quite deceptive, really, in terms of their steepness. It, it is around four meters difference from the bottom of our site to the top of it yeah yeah thank Ten you much. okay thank you for that uh, michael uh, are you happy now councillor juarez or do you want the follow-up question i'm i'm fine for now thank okay. you chair are there any other questions for yeah. our presenter yes, from sir, Emily. Yeah. yeah go ahead all right Go ahead, who? Who is ahead it? With the question, please. Okay. Um, I see that you've got um, some of the apartments are suitable for people in wheelchairs, etc., which is good. Um, I just wanted to ask about the lifts. Um, are the lifts fire safe lifts? Um, well, clearly, there's a lot of interest around um, uh, around fire safety within student buildings. Um, the, 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 sim the simple answer to that is is they can be. Yes, there's no reason why they cannot be. Um, but given the sc the stage of this project at the moment, um, that hasn't been determined. But if it's, if it's, it's certainly a huge conflict consideration with with any student and residential scheme at the moment. So. Of course, if, if it's needed to be, yes, it can be. In terms of means of escape for people in wheelchairs, there's a lot of provision made for, for those people in terms of safe places, etc. cetera. Um, but if there needs to be a firefighting lift in this building, then there will be a firefighting lift in this building, yes. Okay, so can I ask that we put a condition in this that um, at least one of the lifts needs to be a fire safe lift, fire fighting lift? Uh, Councillor Thompson, I think that will have to be dealt with through our planning officer's presentation, which will come after the two objectors that we've got to speak yet. Is that all right? I, I've, I've just I've just reviewed our fire strategy actually very quickly while you're on the line, and we actually do have one firefighting lift and one evacuation lift already designed in the building already. So hopefully that helps. Thank you for that. So can I now pass over to Claire Fury, and she'll be followed by Ben Webster to address the committee. Would you like to go ahead, Claire? Claire? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, yeah, it's Kira. Um, obviously, Ben is with me here, so we'll just do it together. Um, yeah, the main thing, we live uh, in Archview Crescent. We've got two quite large arch windows, um, so it doesn't allow for a lot of privacy. And currently where we are, we can see into the, the building behind already. So that that would be the main point that we have as a privacy issue okay um and are there any questions for kiara sorry for getting a name wrong yes <laughs> okay anybody got any questions okay thank you for that kiara i'd like to is ben is that ben with you or is ben yes yes. yes yeah yeah no that's yeah ben, that's just together word anything no, no, that's fine. It's okay. just um, it's just the privacy. All right. Thank you, then. So can we hand over now to our planning officer, please? Chair, thank you very much. Ed Fer Fergal McAvoy, team leader for the city centre development management team. You've there's an extremely large report in front of you where, where all, all the issues have been addressed in terms of the principle of development. I think the two main issues are relating to both design, scale and massing 
and issues of residential amenity. As is made clear in the presentation, the scheme as originally submitted was between five and nine storeys. Through long dialogue with officers, this has been reduced to a scale of between six storeys at the lowest point, tapering down to four storeys in Roscoe Street, which we are satisfied in terms of a heritage aspect is acceptable in that location. It's been noted that there's been no objections received either from our heritage officers or from Historic England. In terms of the two objectors who made representations, they live in a residential block on the opposite side of Upper Duke Street and the interface distance between this development and the block that those people live in would be between 16.8 and 18 and a half metres. So as members are, are quite where sometimes city centre schemes are compromised in terms of interface distances. In this instance, we're more than satisfied as officers that an interface distance between 16.8 and 18 and a half metres is more than satisfactory and wouldn't lead to any issues of overlooking or loss of privacy. I think in relation to the issues that Councillor Thompson raised in terms of firefighting and evacuation lift, they've been addressed by Mr Lampard, unless Councillor Thompson has any other queries in relation to that. As said to members, you've got a full detailed report in front of you where all, all the issues have been raised and addressed by officers, and we're satisfied to recommend this scheme for approval subject to the completion of the legal agreement. Chair. Have any of the members of the planning committee got any questions for Fergal? Yes, uh, Chair, if I could, Emily Sborrell. Go, Go ahead, on. Emily. Go ahead, Emily. I'm just waiting to get up on the screen. There we go. Oh, I so I'm, I'm in time. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, clarify. I mean, it's my age-old question that I always ask, but obviously it's a huge um, development with over 400 new residents. There's no parking provision, and parking is already a nightmare around there. Um, and apologies, I'm not sure whether there should have been a question to the um, representative, but it's a very, very dense development in an already overpopulated area in terms of student, pop uh, student accommodation. Given the current situation with Corona, there's every chance we're not going to be getting lots of students in September coming to the city. We already have a lot of accommodation. Are we confident that demand is there and that we need something this big um, in a place so close to somewhere like Chinatown? Fergal, would you like to uh, answer that question? And you will put okay, it Chair, oh. yeah, Chair yeah. thank you. I'll, I'll ask, I'll answer cer certain aspects of it and then perhaps the issue of kind of the future viability of student accommodation in terms of coronavirus may be best answered by, by the applicant. We're, yes, it's, it's a car-free development. However, there are 150 cycle spaces proposed within the development. We are satisfied given its previous use as a Chinese supermarket, it would probably be less vehicular traffic to it on an ongoing basis. Obviously, there would be high levels of parking at the start and end of term, but there's a management plan to cover that in terms of how parents park up and, and drop drop uh, students off. As I said, it's a, Prime city centre side, so we're satisfied with car free development in this location it is acceptable. I said there's 150 cycle state spaces proposed within development. The interior student accommodation, there, there's spaces in terms of the space standards, the bedroom units are between 11 and a half and 14 metres square meter floor area, whereas the studio apartments are between 18 and 22 square meters. They're kind of comparable sizes for other student schemes throughout the city. Maybe Mr. Lampard would I like to answer Councillor Sparrow's question in terms of coronavirus and the impact on student provision in the future. Okay, so um, this building, <clears throat> if it's if it's approved 
if there's a resolution to grant today, uh, won't be ready for occupation until 2023. Um, so uh, I think everyone would hope that uh, the current situation is 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 resolved at that point. Um, I think uh, Fusion operate many builders. They've got 12 buildings across the UK, um, and and currently within the coronavirus lockdown. They've done a lot to support the mental health of students, giving them, making sure that there's adequate spaces within their buildings at design stage. So all of the buildings design good quality social space in there. So they're not they're not just in their bedrooms. They've got plenty of space. Many of their schemes have got external space as well. Um, but they've also been introducing um, on-site doctors and testing within their buildings as well to make sure that uh, people are kept healthy. Um, so I think when you compare them to many other student types of buildings, the amount of support space that the buildings have, external space, which is included within this design as well. Um, you know, I think there's there's plenty of provision to ensure that that, that can that can work, um, that can work well and social distancing can be maintained. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of I think if you look at a fusion sort of social media, they do a lot of mental health well-being work anyway. So the work that they've been doing recently on on helping students, um, some are, some are national, national, some are overseas students, um, you know, has been exemplary really. I mean, I, I follow a lot of their social media and see what they do. Um, if I just go back to the car parking question that was raised earlier as well, if I may, just briefly, as I said just now, they are, they've they've developed um, twelve sites across the UK and and none of them have had any car parking at all, apart from one which is a shared site with a hotel. Um, so they operate a policy where where cars are not acceptable. They always choose locations that are, are close enough for people to walk to campus anyway. And as uh, Fogel pointed out, there's plenty of, of cycle parking on site as well. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that, um, Michael. Um, and as we know, we've had other precedents for... Um, student accommodation where in fact now uh, it's managed so that the parents have to drop off and pick up or the students themselves make arrangements um, so it's all staggered and we don't get unregulated traffic movements around these student developments oh, absolutely. absolutely that's exactly what will happen here thank you um so can i move now um, no, no, no. Can I come in? Can I come in? I come in as well. H who's speaking? Both that men. is Mike here. So I think Joe was also wanting to come in. I, um, I think we've got a, a, a slight problem with with Michael not controlling the the access because he can see things that you can't. I.e., he's unmuted their microphone in order to. Oops, I'll move that to try and get me in the fix better. Um, where are we? Oh, there we go. Um, so I had a question before, uh, but was unable to get in. Um, okay, Malcolm, we'll go ahead with your question then. Yeah, well, the, the, the two questions basically I had was reading the report, I did notice that there were it referred to problems with lighting in neighbouring properties, which did not appear to be uh, fully solved. And I was wondering whether more could have been done. And uh, I would like some comments on that. Uh, the report does refer to some harm to designated heritage uh, assets, which uh, uh, haven't been covered apart from saying there was no objection from Heritage England, and looking at the pictures of the uh, the presentation given by the applicant, um, it talk, it, I was just wondering a simple question when when I saw the brick, whether it was actual brick or whether it was a station. Um, Malcolm, some of that was a bit unclear, but I'm going to hand over back to Fergal to answer some of those points, but some of it was covered in the agenda items. So can I call on Fergal to answer those points, please, from Malcolm? Chair, thank, thank you very much. I think from the two issues Councillor Kendi raised was in terms of issues of light and impact on adjacent residential properties. I'm, I'm talking about my 
face hasn't come up on the screen. I'm assuming you can still hear me. An impact on... I can still hear you, but okay. also carry on. Okay, an impact on heritage assets. Officers have worked hard in relation to ensuring that you get a viable development which does not impact on adjacent residential properties. As I previously said, the overall scale has been reduced from five to nine storeys to four to six storeys, where there's interface with residential properties, especially in Roscoe Street, and more particularly the rear of a residential development in Back Knight Street. Those heights have been dropped to four storeys in height, and the block where you, you will have seen on the presentation, the block facing the rear properties on Back, back Knight Street has been set, set back to give an interface distance with Back Knight Street of between six and a half and just slightly seven metres interface distance, which we, we are satisfied in a kind of tight city centre urban grain that this is a satisfactory interface distance. In relation to the Anglican Cathedral made representations in terms of the overall height, but as officers and as Historic England or the National Council to be, we're satisfied that there's no impact on her heritage assets. The current supermarket is between two and three storeys high and it has, there's no impact, it has no kind of impact in terms of the visual aesthetics of Duke Street conservation area, whereas the, the height of this building will increase somewhat. We are satisfied in terms of the material palette, in terms of the design of the building, it will actually enhance the conservation area. And it doesn't impact on any of the listed buildings in proximity to the development site. Thank you, Fergal. Now, I believe we have somebody else who wants to come in. Is that Councillor Hanson? Yeah. yeah, if you'd like to speak now, Councillor Hanson. Yeah, me, yeah. Hello? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. Carry no, on. Just in, in, in terms of the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the actual project, I mean, it really um, replaces what is a, a nice sort of this point in time uh, on, on the corner of, of, of the streets. Um, I accept what the officers are saying in terms of the privacy and the distances and all that kind of stuff. I accept that and the right and proper to do that. And um, the question to the developer, given the concerns that the two objectives have got, is there any possible way that you can do some enhancements to further protect their privacy? Um, I'm, un I'm unsure if there's anything you can do, but it's certainly a question um, that I think perhaps needs asking and perhaps a response from yourself might be helpful to the two objectives. Um, so, so it's unusual to do <coughs> it in this order, but it's easier in fact. Uh, so I'm really calling, uh, well, Councillor Hanson's calling on the developer to come back in here, but I'll also have a follow-up comment from Fergal if he wants to come in. So could I ask uh, Mike, to answer that question as best he can. I will, I will do. Okay, so um, along the objectives, as I understand it, they live on Archview Crescent, which is on the opposite side of um, Upper Duke Street. Um, and you know, it, 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 I think, as, as Fergus pointed out, this is a this is a pretty wide um, city street, and it we're looking. So you're looking more obliquely along that night street. We recognise that it is a very um narrow road it's a, it's very sort of it's a very narrow street but obviously we pull the building away from the existing boundary so um that that should help to improve that and again you know we've tried to you know, introduce rooms along that edge that that mean that that the students are less likely to be uh, standing good neighbor uh, to all of their developments and, and and again i think any nuisances if there are any nuisances can be dealt with um directly by 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 the management within the buildings as well uh, who who have worked with Fusion for a very long time. Um, so um, hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Mike. 
Virgil, did you want to say anything else? Because you've already dealt with the question of um, the objectors interface distances. But if there's anything else you want to say, do come in. No, Chair, I'm happy, unless Councillor Hanson has any other questions, I'm happy that those issues he's raised have been addressed. OK, Councillor Hanson, um, Councillor Kennedy, can I move now on to the motion, please? So can I move that the recommendation as amended be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Just to remind members that voting for purposes of virtual meetings has to be done individually by name. And also for purposes of this meeting, councillors Ross and Spurl are present as alternates and observers. So and that is to cover any eventualities in terms of any members having technical difficulties to enable proceedings to continue. So councillors Spurl and Ross will not be able to vote. With that in mind, we will move to voting, in which case I will take councillor Cummings first. Councillor Cummings, I would ask you to unmute your microphone and to please confirm for, for the record what your vote is on this application. I approve. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Please remute your microphone. I'll move on to the next member. Our next member will be Councillor Hansen. Councillor Hansen, could you please unmute your microphone and confirm your vote? Just uh, be confirmed, please. We couldn't hear that clearly. Councillor Hansen, you're, you're coming across as on mute, so if you could please unmute your mic. Can you hear me now? We can do now. Okay, I'm following you. Thank you, Councillor Hansen. We now come to Councillor Thompson. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lavelle, please unmute your microphone. All the motion. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat, please unmute your mic. Councillor Marat, if you could unmute your mic. Yeah, sorry, Michael. Four. Thank you. Councillor Juarez, I'm just putting you on screen now. If you could unmute your microphone, please, and confirm your vote. Against. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Conception, I'm coming to you now. I'm just going to pin you on screen. If you could unmute your microphone, please, and confirm your vote. Yeah. A welcome scheme, fully support. Thank you. And we will now come to the chair, Councillor O'Brien, if you could confirm your vote, please. Agreed. Well, thank you, Chair. Just bear with me. I will confirm the vote to you now. Just check the numbers. Um. Voting based on the data is eight in favour one against and no abstentions. Therefore, on that basis, the application is approved subject to the published conditions. Are you happy with that, Chair? Yes, I am. Thank you, so, Chair. Can we move on to agenda item four now, which is for Roscoe Street, and it's land boarded by both Roscoe Street and Oldham Place in Liverpool One. And can I invite Pauls Jackson and Murphy to speak as agents. So Paul Jackson first. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, what it actually is, it's myself. I'm the applicant, architect and owner of the site. 
we've got an agent, which is uh, Colin Williams, and we've got Paul Murphy, who came in last week because he had some issues with the software, is uh, a local resident who wants to speak about the scheme. But that would be awesome. I see. I see. So Paul's going to come on later. Yes, straight up. He'll come in on this link. Yes. Okay. But are you speaking now, Paul Jackson, yeah. in, about the application? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. If you'd like to go ahead then. Okay, thank you. If you if you could put the first slide up, please. But first, I'd like to say thanks for the time, giving me the time to come and uh, represent this uh, site. Purchased the site a number of months ago after it had had an approval for student accommodation. Uh, 111 student studios uh, was approved. I cannot see anything on the slide system. That's it. This is the site at present. This end of uh, Roscoe Street is a hive of antisocial behaviour. It has been for many years. Uh, and it's probably the last part of Roscoe Street where it's, it's a bit of a rundown area. So it was originally going to be student accommodation. We purchased, well, I purchased the site uh, and worked closely with the planning officers and produced a scheme for 82 one and two bedroom apartments uh, for sale or rent. Uh, so if you could take the next slide, please. That's just a typical floor plan and the next slide. At the very outset, we wanted to produce a scheme that was very similar to the approved scheme. The scheme work, the planning officers uh, and the planning committee liked the design. So we produce this scheme, which is elevationally, it's almost identical. The red actually represents the approved scheme outline. So as you can see, uh, the scheme is the same in terms of uh, scale, height and massing. Uh, the only difference being there's a, there's a mixture of one and two bedroom apartments. Uh, a large, also a large number of these are uh, DDA compliant. We've worked very closely with the uh, planning <coughs> officer uh, and the access officer uh, to get a good proportion of M4, uh, ones, twos, and particularly threes uh, the scheme has a large, there's no car parking, the scheme has a large uh, number of uh, internally uh, secure bike store. Uh, it works very well with the street scene, as did the approved scheme. It's very similar. I think it will actually add to uh, the area. It'll add to natural surveillance uh, and make this end of Roscoe Street uh, a much more pleasant and desirable place. So if I pass over now to Colin Williams, who is uh, the planning consultant, and then Paul Murphy after Colin, who is a, uh, a local resident. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear you? Thank you. Um, as the report in front of you um, set out, the key planning issues that we have dealt with are very, very similar to the ones that you um, set out and agreed in principle for the student accommodation development. There's actually very little in terms of the way the principle of development and land use would would be for this um, development as well. Residential use very similar to the way student accommodation is accepted as part of a mixed-use area within this part of the city centre. Um, one of the key issues that you will have seen in the report, um, and Paul did uh, mention it, is the DDA compliant units. Um, the scheme that we is in front of you was actually amended quite a bit through discussions with officers, um, around about kind of 
middle March, early March time, and then we were asked then to consider increasing the number of M42 stroke M43 units. Um, at the time, we'd already complied with what is the national minimum standard for M4 units and is actually the national plan and guidance standard where there's no local standard in place. And in terms of local standard, that means an adopted policy being in place that sets any different standard to the national standard. So the scheme was actually designed to um, comply with national standard and included an additional amount of, of um, M4 to M43 units. Your access officer um, applying draft policy H12 of the, of the new local plan um, quite rightly is seeking to increase the number of accessible units and there's no issue with that. Um, what we have had to do is to balance the way the scheme was amended already and to balance it with viability. Um, but we have increased the number of M42 and M43 units from the original 24% in the scheme up to a, a around about 70%. So as your report says, it, it, it's worked hard to uh, meeting the objectives of the emerging policy um, and I hope that you can see it, it achieves a good balance. We are way, way above the national minimum standard and we're very, very close to where the council would hope to be when the new local plan comes into force and if the inspector accepts the way that the council's new standard should be. So all the issues are set out in front of the, in front of you in terms of the report, and I hope you will um, approve the application in accordance with the recommendation. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, are there any questions for those two presenters from committee members? Could you just uh, put the slides two on, just so you can see the uh, visualization as well, please? So do we have any questions from the planning committee? No? Well, in that case, can I call on now um, Paul, who I believe is going to speak in support? Yes. So Paul, if you'd like to speak now, please. Good morning. Um, I'm a resident of the area. I've lived there and worked there for over 20 years, and uh, I have a family of three adult children who also live there. And I now have grandchildren who live at the sorry, who go to school at the southern end of uh, the street. Um, I've always been concerned about the northern end, which, because of its neglected state, does uh, encourage antisocial behaviour. Um, I'm also an active member of the Georgian Society, and so I'm not just a passive resident. Um, as far as the visual uh, impact of the building is concerned, I think the design is good. Uh, it can't just be a case of uh, uh, Georgian buildings being uh, rebuilt in the area. I recognize that. And I believe that the people who will come and live uh, either as owners or renters in that building will add to the uh, social mix of the area. Uh, I do support the scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, I'm not entirely clear now. I've got down uh, that we've got uh, somebody called Emlyn Williams, who's the chair of the Rodney Street Association, who's also got to speak today. Is that correct? No. No. So can I pass over to the Yeah, yes. Oh, we can oh, have Mr. Williams <coughs> speak. Uh, I'm just checking to see whether he has been able to access. Mr. Williams, would you like to come on now? I can't hear anybody. <coughs> well, in view of the fact that nobody has come on, on audio, can we hand over to our planning officer? And if in the meantime, Mr. Williams is going to come on, uh, who's chair of the Rodney Street Association, we can hear him after we've heard from our planning officer. Uh, chair, chair th th thank you very much, 
the concerns of, given that Mr. Williams isn't in attendance, the concerns of the Rodney Street Residents Association have been addressed within the officer's report. They've raised concerns that they feel the development should be a scale of two to three storeys on Roscoe Street as opposed to four storeys what it currently is. And they feel that there should be, um, uh, they acknowledge that they're satisfied that it's a residential development as opposed to this uh, kind of student accommodation scheme, which was what you previously approved back in October no, last year. We're, we're satisfied that the scheme, the the scheme in front of you today is virtually identical in terms of scale, design, as to what you previously granted. The main issue in relation to this application is it's a change from student accommodation to residential accommodation, which would be offered for say in the open market and rented in, and it's concentrated on mature students and, and key workers. All the issues raised in previous applications in terms of the impact on heritage assets, the impact on the two adjoining conservation areas of Mount Pleasant and Duke Street, they've previously been asked and answered. So unless members have any particular questions in relation to this particular scheme, I'd like them to, if they have any questions that they need answering. So can we have any questions now from planning committee members? Chair, I would like to ask a question. Yes, carry well, on, Councillor Juarez. Yeah, um, well, the scheme seems quite um, sympathetic to that local area, and I'm really pleased that uh, it's going to, um, the application is going to contribute £100 towards uh, cycling improvements within that area, that vicinity. Um, can I ask, um, when uh, the money is used to improve the, the facilities for cyclists, um, how is the council going to get involved in um, implementing that? And I mean, for me, I think, you know, we, We've heard of so many cycling schools, but what I would like is like proper meaningful facilities where cyclists can cycle safely. So, um, you know, I do welcome the scheme and I do welcome the application of that, that contribution of the um, £100 per apartment. But, um, you know, I really do want to see the money well spent and well used so that people do actually cycle around that area because, you know, the second application we've had today that uh, is not going to be providing any parking um, uh, to the but rest to of the be clear, area. there is cycle parking. But as in yes, case, there is cycle parking, but... Parking. Yes, there is cycle parking. I've read that within the, um, within the report uh, chair, uh, but it says that the... the applicant will pay a hundred pounds towards um, cycling infrastructure within that vicinity. So um, I'm, as a member, I'm just saying that I would like that money well spent and how is the council going to get involved in implementing that and making sure that it's, it's safe for cyclists. I will hand over now back to our planning officer and if appropriate, the highways officer to see what's being done about the cycling infrastructure in the area, if I may. Okay, Chair, th thank you very much. There's a provision within the Section 106 legal agreement attached to this recommendation in terms of uh, a contribution of £8,200, which equates to £100 per residential unit towards improvements for improvements to cycle provision within the city centre, which would be have to be paid prior to development commencing on site. I'm unsure how that money would be spent in terms of specific provision. I don't know if Andy Dingwall is listening on. He's the highways officer who may be able to address the specific questions that Councillor Juarez is raising. 
Andy, yeah. would you like to say something, please? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Andy Dingwall, Highways Development Control Team Leader. Um, part of the responsibilities within the Highways Development Control is for walking and cycling. We have a dedicated uh, walking and cycling officer who's in the process of reviewing the highway uh, network, in particular regards to cycling across the whole city, but also in the city centre. Um, following that review, there'll be an identified network whereby um, improvements will be required to provide safe uh, and direct cycle links. Uh, a good example of the type of infrastructure that we've recently introduced is that that's been uh, put in on Park Lane, where you've got completely segregated cycle lanes, separate footways and separate carriageways. Um, and that's kind of the standard of uh, cycle infrastructure that we're looking to put in. Um, today um, and that's the kind of thing that we can expect this money to be spent on in the city centre. Thanks Chair. Thank you Andy for that. Are there any questions, any other questions from other members now? I don't hear anybody so I'm going on to move that the recommendation be approved. Is okay. that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Same voting arrangements as per the previous application. We will take, I'll go through the list of members present and ask you to vote in turn. So taking Councillor Cummings firstly, I'm just going to put you on screen now. Can I ask that you unmute your microphone and confirm your vote? Just reconfirm that please, Councillor Cummings, for clarity. I approve. Thank you. Can I ask everyone else present to please mute your microphones? as well. Next, take Councillor Hanson. Councillor Hanson, if you could unmute your microphone and confirm your vote. Please. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Councillor Lavelle. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy, could you unmute your mic, please? Sorry about that. Um, agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat. Councillor Marat. Thank you. Councillor Juarez. If you're going to mute, unmute your mic, please, and confirm your vote. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Juarez. Councillor Conception. Agreed. Thank you. And the chair, please. Agreed. Thank you, Chair. There don't be, being no further members of the committee present, the vote is nine in favour, none against, no abstentions, and on that basis, the recommendation and the application is approved. Chair, we now move to our next item of business. Which is land at Oatbridge Aut, and Langholm, East Lancashire Road, Liverpool 11. And I have that we have Jay Sladansky and Natalie, is it Marley, to speak? Would Jay and Natalie like to speak and come online? Hi, yes, it's Natalie Mayle. Natalie Mayle, thank you. 
Um, so I've got myself, which I'll talk through the presentation. Um, it's the um, I'm representing from Ainsley Gorman Architects. Um, um, if you'd like to load up the first slide, please. Uh, so I was just waiting for the first slide to load up. Okay, um, so we, yeah, so we've got myself here today from Ainsley Gorman Architects and we've got Jay Siodanke, um, he's from Cobalt, um, the client. Um, so the site we're referring to as um, Old Bridge is a develop residential development site um, on a site in Crockstiff along the East Langs Road. The site once housed three tower blocks, has been vacant for a number of years and contributed nothing to the local community. Ooh, just think just something just slips there. Um, sorry, that's the second slide. Um, uh, yes, it lies on the edge of the Stonedale Estate, which is a large Rad Radburn style housing estate. The estate has been um, run down over the years and our applicant Cobalt has an objective to revive the estate and enhance the existing housing stock and circulation within the area. It's an excellent location for family housing and with good links to the city centre, which has been taken into consideration in the scheme. The scheme will provide 57 new affordable homes for the local community, which will consist of a mixture of two and three bedroom houses and one and two bedroom flats. All of the homes have been designed to meet both the national space standards and M42 of the building regs. As well as this, there is one specially designed four bedroom house and six two bedroom flats, which adhere to meet M43 standards and are therefore fully wheelchair accessible. We have worked closely with planning officer Hannah Rowans to provide an appropriate development for the site in terms of scale, materiality and housing mix. The site will be an extension to the existing Stonedale estate and there is a pedestrian footpath link between New Road B and the East Lanks Road which will link the bus stop and connections to the city centre. The existing defensible landscape buffer surrounding the site has been kept and will be enhanced to visually improve the amenity and help create a noise buffer surrounding the site. We have also worked with an acoustic consultant who has generated a report as part of documentation for this application. We've worked with the highways department and have designed adequate parking and cycle storage accordingly. Parking will be softened with soft landscaping and materiality throughout the scheme. Um, Cobalt Housing are a local housing association who set out to improve the local housing stock in the community and this application is part of their vision to regenerate the Stonedale estate. Thank you. So is Jay going to speak next, Natalie? Uh, I think Jay's just present to answer any yes. questions, if, if, there are, um, if there are any. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to invite any questions from members of the planning committee. Are there any questions? Yeah, could I do? Could I ask a question? Carry on. Very simple. Um, just to confirm when you're looking to complete this uh, this new plan. So Councillor Cummings is asking when you're likely to be able to complete the whole development. Can I can I come in and answer that one? Certainly. Um, so we're, we're currently out of tender. Um, tenders were due back last month, actually, but um, due to the, the current COVID situation, that's now been extended to to the 1st of June. Um, so mid-June, mid we'd be hoping to commission our, and should I say instruct our, our contractor, the, the successful contractor. Um, with a leading period of eight weeks or so, we would hope to be on site, all things being well in August. And then it's a 16 month build program then. So we'd, we'd be looking to, all right, is it April? Does that come? It takes around April, April 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I'm sure that answers your question clearly, Councillor Cummings. Are there any other questions? Please, Chair, can I raise a question? Yes, carry on. You know, Natalie, thanks for your contribution. Um, I certainly think it would um, positively impact the sort of the visible space given it's basically a piece of derelict land 
So just a quick quick question. I imagine it's probably something which you can answer, Jay. On section uh, on the section 106, which is what you've requested, what Cobalt have requested to be wavered to make the to make the development viable. Um, I was just wondering why that was the case because on the last financial report from Cobalt in 2019, um, you know, you exceeded expectations financially. So I was just wondering, would, would there be any discretion on if you can't, if you think it's not acceptable to pay 100% section 106, would some agreement be made to pay something at least? Yeah, well, the, we, we put in a, a, um, a viability just to give a, an outline view of what the scheme's costing us and, and basically the residual value that's left it came back minus two million approximately i can't, I can't remember the exact figure i'd have to get the, the file out of that one that has been submitted um so we we, we we felt that with it being homes england um supported to help us acquire the site the fact that there's homes england grant helping us develop the site also um to pay in excess of one hundred and thirty thousand pounds, I think, was asked for through the section one hundred six contribution. It was excessive. Um, anyway, long, long story short, that was reviewed by uh, your, your viability team, yeah, and they accepted our, our application. And we will still be contributing seven thousand five hundred pounds um, to the local area through the, the highways improvements. Yeah, thank you for that. Are there any other questions for the applicants? In which case, I'll pass over to our planning officer, please. So can we have our planning officer? Good morning, Chair. Good morning. Can everybody hear and see me? I can certainly hear you. Yes, I can see you now, yeah, Joe. I can see myself as well. Yeah, I can see you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Um, my name is John Eves. I am the team leader for planning matters in the north of Liverpool. Uh, Chair, you've got a very full report in front of you, which details all the various issues associated with this particular application. Um, I just want to make two points, one of which will pick up on Councillor Lavelle's issue around Section 106. But the first point to make is in relation to the design you'll see in the report that there is quite some um, explanation around the design issues and you've heard from the applicant this morning about the uh, need to set it back uh, from the east lancashire road with an acoustic report stating that uh, otherwise there will be a problem in terms of noise um the noise environment for, for those new occupants so we're looking to ensure that there is adequate um acoustic screen, but obviously it's important to make sure that that screen is um, visually uh, satisfactory and obviously the landscaping as well will help uh, screen some of that. So they are matters that will be conditioned. The second point in relation to section 106, Chair, um, the applicant uh, has maintained that this is um, a challenging site to uh, develop in terms of its viability. And you've heard from the applicant confirming that they have actually had to get grant in order to make it work. Um, they have submitted a viability report to the council that has been reviewed by our external consultants uh, who have found that the um, methodology and the conclusions that it's reached are satisfactory. And they accordingly advise that um, section 106 should not be applied in this particular case. We do, however, consider that it is necessary to implement highway works, so there is an element uh, within the Section 106 for £7,500 to be paid. Hopefully that covers everything, Chair. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions from members of the Planning Committee? Okay, so I'm going to move that the recommendation as amended be approved. Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. As per voting and previous approach, I'll go through members on the list first. Firstly, Councillor Cummings, I'll put you on screen now. If you just unmute and confirm your vote. Fully approved. Thank you. Next, we'll come to Councillor Hanson. Can you please unmute your microphone? Agreed. Thank you. 
Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Now to Councillor Lavelle. Agreed. Just to reconfirm, so you're on screen while the vote is made. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat. Just to be confirmed, see you on screen. Thank you. Councillor Juarez. Agree. Thank you. Councillor Conception. Agreed. Thank you. And lastly, our chair, please. Yes, agreed. Thank you, Chair. I'm just to confirm the voting on this application and recommendation. That is nine in favour, none against, no abstentions. Therefore, the recommendation is carried and the application is approved. Chair, if we move to our next item of business, we please. We move on to agenda item six, which is 115 Anfield Road, Liverpool 4. And I'd like to invite David Moore to speak. Thank you, Chair. You'd like to carry it? Yeah, just waiting for the slideshow. It's available, please. Okay. Well, thank you, Chair, and morning all. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Uh, my name is Dave Morse. I'd like to present the proposals for the conversion of the former police station at 115 Anfield Road. I'll briefly talk about the building, comment on relevant planning considerations, address the main concerns that have been raised, and I'll look forward to any questions. So this is a proposal for a change of use from HMO to 26 bedroomed bed and breakfast. Although not listed, the building has a value to Anfield's historic built environment. As such, the proposed development will look to conserve its value through providing a sustainable future use for the building. Through careful design, the repurposing of the building will protect its architectural and historical significance, both inside and out through the retention of the original features and where possible the original plan form. The investment associated with this uh, proposal will ensure that the building is maintained appropriately, including refurbishment of the building's exterior. Uh, next slide, please. From the plans, you'll see that the original cell block and sergeant's living quarters have been retained as far as possible. Legibility of these components of the building are considered important to uh, its conservation, but also to the quality of the conversion and providing a USP to the finished product. As such, great importance has been placed on weaving necessary facilities for the safe and accessible operation of the B&B into the historic form of the building to meet, to ensure that it meets modern standards. Next slide, please. The full report in front of you sets out all the issues, but in respect to planning considerations, we would comment as follows. There's been positive pre-application engagement with the local planning North. The package of information lodged with the application exceeds that of the local validation requirements as the applicants strive to avoid any misapprehension or ambiguity for interested parties. This package includes a comprehensive acoustic survey, a robust hotel management plan, a service and delivery management plan and a construction management plan. Further engagement has since taken place with ward councillors and the local community to provide assurances and further information where needed. Uh, both the pre and full up stage, the principle of development has been considered acceptable with the full application demonstrating compliance with the development plan and all other supplementary guidance. This proposal directly supports the objectives set down in the Anfield SRF insofar as it proposes additional tourist facilities within the area. There's been no objections from technical consultees and there are numerous material considerations weighing in favour of the development. Uh, next slide, please. 
We'd just now like to take this opportunity to address some of the concerns that have been raised. So uh, as far as the proposed use is concerned, this will be a B&B with 24 hour on-site management. The applicants would also like to engage with the local community in regular consultation to foster a working relationship. In terms of traffic issues, there are parking controls in place around the application site. The site is also recognised as being accessible and benefits from public transport links. This is all recognised in the highways consultation response. Irrespective of this, hotel staff will be trained to establish guest travel arrangements at the booking stage and advise accordingly to avoid undue traffic associated with the bed and breakfast. Procedures for this are contained within the hotel management plan. The issue of noise and disturbance has been raised. However, the hotel management plan does contain a robust strategy for the management of guests during their stay, including strict house rules governing behaviour. We must also reiterate that these proposals do not include for a bar and draft conditions ensure that a bar cannot be implemented without express permission from the local planning authority. Finally, in respect of alternative uses away from a youth class C1 bed and breakfast, any such development would represent a material change of use and therefore require full planning permission. As such, members are assessing a development that relates solely to guest accommodation as intended. Next slide, please. In concluding on this application, I would ask members to appreciate that the proposed development is in accordance with national and local planning policy and that they recognise material considerations, as discussed above, that weigh significantly in favour of this development. Just an additional small point, if I may, Chair, um, the officer's report does duplicate the condition around cycle parking, so 15 and 17 are the same. I would ask that members agree that one of these conditions be removed, um, subject to your agreement. Uh, thank you for your time, and I welcome any questions. Are there any questions? Hello, any questions? I can hear somebody. Hello, I'm not sure who's speaking though. Hello, Sir. Yes, who's speaking, please? Billy. Billy Malik. Okay, Billy, carry on. Hello, David. Hello. Yeah, I'm Billy Marrett, one of the Anfield Ward councillors. Um, we're just concerned that you haven't involved the likes of councillors or any or community yet in this project, as far as I'm aware. Um, so it's a, a lot of people are made up what you're doing with Anfield Police Station and that you're keeping the old bill, but you've not been out to any of the councillors yet or the public and said, this is why we're doing it. It'll be safe, like you said, about a bar and everything. You know, there won't be any bar. You haven't put people's minds at rest because they're, they're worried about what hours this is going to be. Are people going to be coming in at two o'clock in the morning, David? You know, after being out. Yeah. The policy on time. And um, what I would say to that is, uh, Councillor, um, we did put a number of sort of... Um, packages of additional information out through Councillor Rosgroves. We were assured that those packages of information would be circulated to the to concerned parties. Basically, we um, set out ways to negate the, uh, the, the planning submission that we made, including sort of uh, making reference to the hotel management plan, things like operational concerns, and how we were looking to address concerns such as noise and disturbance. We appreciate we are living in close proximity to a, to a lot of neighbours. As such, you know, we, we, we hope that the hotel management plan is a, is a fluid document. We'd like to um, retain the sort of communication lines with neighbours and work with them to address any concerns going forward, not just now, but in the future. Thank you. So we do know from our uh, agenda notes that uh, Councillor Ros Groves um, was concerned. So I'm very pleased to hear that you have had a discussion with her. And I don't know if our planning officer might be able to um, say any more about that. Are there any other questions from the planning committee? Can I hand over to our planning officer now then, please? Excuse me, I've got a question. Carry on. Can I ask a question? Carry on. 
Could, yeah, could I just ask a question in relation to the comments from the Merseyside police who've advised certain measures uh, to address uh, issues of crime? Yeah, but not all the uh, suggestions have been acted on by the applicant. Can you just clarify uh, what the applicants are going to do in relation to crime and the suggested uh, recommendations by the police? Uh, yeah, I had a detailed conversation with the architectural liaison officer at Merseyside Police and we sat and went through the, the plans in some detail. As you'll appreciate, we, we're dealing with the uh, retrofitting of a listed, uh, sorry, of a, an existing building. So there are certain physical limitations. Um, the measures that we are within our gift have been implemented, i.e. sort of um, access control on doors, uh, a scheme of CCTV will be going in. There is uh, sort of a refuge area for staff, um, cash handling and all that's been sort of dealt with. Um, the, the, the key one was sort of looking at how the, uh, the, the, the there's natural surveillance from the reception desk onto the front door. But uh, having appreciated the sort of limitations of the building, um, Merseyside Police were content with what has been put forward. So can I hand over to our planning now, please? Yeah, I'm trying to get in here. Uh, who's trying to get in, sorry? Councillor Hanson. Councillor Hanson, go ahead. Yeah, uh, in, in, in terms of, I'm, I'm in contact with Councillor Rosgrove, um, and the feedback I'm getting from, and apologies to Ros, she's not well today. Um, the um, feedback from residents is one of, we don't want it, we don't need it, and um, this flies straight in the face of what the developer is saying, but clearly um, 26 people attending the match will be in the town uh, coming back to 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, and by definition that will cause noise, nuisance and anti-social day because that's the way of the will. Um, so whilst the, um, we may have stuff in place while they're inside the building, is as they are arriving back from the from the town um, to do whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, so clearly, uh, one councillor is extremely unhappy. That's Ros Groves, uh, and she's went back to say so. The discussion she's had with the the, the residents and the residents are unhappy as well. And um, so it sends to fly in the face of what the developer is saying. Uh, David, would you like to come back on that or shall I hand over to our planner? Um, I, I, I suppose the only thing I can really say is I'm, I'm quite surprised um, uh, at Councillor Groves' stance, given that uh, you know the last few conversations I have had with her have all been very positive. I can't say any more than that. Okay, can I hand over to our planning officer, please? Thank you, John. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll just pick up the, the, the various points in the order that they were made. Um, so obviously, Councillor Maris has raised some issues around wider consultation. I would simply emphasise that that community consultation undertaken by the applicant is obviously over and above the statutory consultation that we've carried out. And obviously, from the report, you can see that we had had quite a significant uh, number of objections raised. Um, obviously, I'm pleased to hear that there has been some additional consultation uh, undertaken by the applicants to try and allay some of the fears uh, that have been raised. And I have nothing to add uh, to what um, David Morse has already said in relation to that. Um, in relation to um, Councillor Hansen's comments about um, concerns about noise and disturbance, again, we understand those. We're particularly um, aware of issues in and around the Anfield area, particularly with um, unmanaged facilities through the sort of Airbnb model. And we've throughout this application made it consistently clear to the applicants the importance of having a proper managed facility. And as you'll see, there are a number of conditions on there, as you've heard again from the uh, applicants agents, um, that try to restrict the way and manner in which this building can be used. Um, 
And then finally, in relation to the issues around um, Merseyside Police and their comments, again, I have nothing to disagree with what the agent has said in relation to that. There was significant discussions around that particular issue. The applicants have liaised fully with Merseyside Police since they raised the initial concerns. Uh, a number of measures have been put into place, such as reducing the overall number of uh, uh, access points to the building so as to control uh, movement in and out of the building and you've heard CCTV and so on um, and the issue that we um, have not been able to resolve is as you've heard again from the agent that issue about the um, uh, reception area and the amount of space in front of it to uh, provide surveillance but because of the uh, configuration of the building we acknowledge that that is challenging and I'm happy to recommend approval uh, for the reasons set out in the report chair yeah. happy to answer any further questions are there any questions yeah pretty yeah. matter yeah come on then and um, maybe John I should address this to David himself but what one wooding aspect of David's report there was right at the very end where he said if there was to be a change of plan another planning application would have to be forwarded if they decide to change it from a B&B, and that's worrying the council is in Anfield. The, the suggest, a suggestion even now that that B&B might not last forever and it could be changed into some something else. So I don't know what David wants to come back on that. I'm sorry for bringing it up to you, John, but maybe it's David. Okay. But that's worrying to us. That there's already a comment made that if we wanted to alter this building, Another planning application would have to be made. Uh, can can I perhaps come back on that, please? Yes, you can, David, yeah. and yeah. then I'll okay. hand over to you. Thanks very much for your comment. Um, hopefully, I can uh, allay concern. The the um, it was included in the presentation because it had been raised uh, as an objection. It's contained within the officer's report as sort of a concern rather than perhaps an objection. And my point was that any sort of change of use away from the B&B &B would require full planning permission. I, I, I'm not setting out any intention for the applicants. Um, they, they, they're very committed to what they're doing here. They live locally. They are really, really sort of committed to the project and, can, uh, and really believe in it. My, my point was just to say that they're not, this isn't a stepping stone for them to then look to, 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 to sort of use this as something other than what it's intended to do and what you are assessing in front of you today. Yeah, David, that was, that was my worry that you had, had that, you know, right at the end, saying like, I if it's about step that, forward, that worry. I accept it. it's voted on, on today, you know, the B&B. &B. Yeah. And that's the question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, could I, Jay, could I hand back to John, please? Yeah. Can I just add to that, please? Is it okay to no, I'm handing that? over to John. I'm handing over to our planning officer, Lit now. Uh, John. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't have anything to add to what uh, David Morse has said there. Um, I think the comments, as he's explained, was to try and reassure members that there would be further scrutiny of any particular changes to the application um, if indeed there was to be some changes in the future. Um, but I'm, I'm satisfied with the response that's been provided, Chair. Now, is there anybody else who wants to make any comment now? Please. Not be clear on that. Yes, come in, please. That's uh, Councillor Hanson. Yeah, in, in yeah. terms of the um, a licensed bar, the developer has said that they have no intention of having a, a, a bar in the premises. Is it written into the planning application uh, that the uh, premises would have to come back to planning uh, to, if they wish to install a, a bar of, of, of whatever nature into their premises? John, can I hand over yeah. to you, please? I'm off mute. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, I can hear you, John. Yeah, Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, the, the, the simple answer is because it's an internal operation, it would not require planning permission. And so to that extent, we can't control the physical insertion of a bar. That would ultimately require... Um, uh, 
an application through the licensing process. So, because, as I say, because it's a plan, because it's an internal alteration, the planning authority wouldn't be able to exercise control of the physical installation of a bar. However, you'll see that condition. Um, where is it? One of the conditions that we put on there is around the communal areas and and so on. And so that, in our view, will limit the use of the um, non-residential space um, solely to the uses that are specified. So basically as an ancillary use associated with the hotel. The applicant has said that if they wish to put a bar in there, they would come back and seek planning permission. Is there any way we can put a caveat in there that says a, uh, to install a bar would be class of change of use and have to come back to, through the planning process? And the reason I'm saying that, John, is because yeah. we've had a, um, a um, uh, in, in Kirkdale, we've had a bed and breakfast on the old Phoenix um, pub, as you may well remember. It went for a bread and breakfast, and now those comments were made about no bar, and now they've just put in a application to install a permission to license them for a bar. Hmm. Can, I just, can I just make a quick comment? Sorry. Yes, please, David. That might help. Yeah, sorry, John. Sorry if I jumped in there. I apologise. Um, I'd just like to reiterate that um, you know it's it, it, the applicants would be more than happy to sort of um, have that role in place of, of the bar. This is you know we, there's no sort of disingenuous move here. They, they they've got no interest in having a bar. And of course, any you know in, in terms of a bar, it's not a planning consideration, but you'd have to go through the licensing application as well, of course. So it, that's just something to bear in mind. So to sum up, yeah. we have, we have data. Um, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. I haven't finished either. Um, we, we've, 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 sorry, we've had, sorry, I just wanted to clarify that David has said he would be happy to have a condition put in about a bar. Now I'll go over to you now, um, Councillor Hanson. Thank you. As, as I was saying, John, so can we make sure that yeah. that's okay, given what the applicant is saying, that if you want to put a bar in, they have to come back to, to the to planning, uh, because tomorrow they, some, they may sell that business to somebody else and they will come in looking for a bar. Fair I'll respond to Councillor Hansen's point. I think that is possible. Um, it might need um, some um, careful consideration, both with the applicant and possibly colleagues in legal service to make sure it's drafted correctly. But if you as a committee are happy to approve it on the basis of a condition that restricts the um, implementation of a bar within the hotel, then I think we can um, move forward on that basis. I think it is possible. I, I can't provide you with the precise wording here and now, um, and maybe that's one that we can, um, you can accept that we deal with under delegated powers, uh, provided that the um, objectives of that uh, are dealt with through the condition. Just to come in, so, just to come in John, is there, I just want to say I fully support Councillor Hanson's concerns and I would imagine others on the committee would support that. Thank you Councillor Cummings. So I'm going to hand over now to Michael Jones because he uh, can give us some legal advice. So um, can we include when we approve or if we approve this Michael um, that we delegate the power to the planning and legal departments to introduce a condition about the bar? Michael. Thank you, Chair. By way of clarification, what uh, John Hayes has indicated as a suitable option is permissible. Essentially, what you, you would need to require to move as Chair would be a resolution to approve the application as amended subject to the grant of delegated authority to the head of planning to ultimately determine the application with the inclusion of a suitably worded condition restricting the ability of the applicants or future occupiers or owners of the premises to basically install 
any any form of licensed bar facility without seeking the express consent of the local planning authority in the form of a subsequent application. The wording of that can be suitably agreed between legal services and the planning department. If you're happy with that as a resolution, uh, you can seek to formally move that. Mike, it's, it's Sam, Chair. Can I just add a point as well, please? Thank you, yes. Sam. I'll bring you on now. Please, Sam. Thank you. Hi, hi, Chair. Um, yeah, John, John's right, but we'd have to look into the legality of what's lawful and what's not. So can we amend the um, recommendation to include condition and or agreement, please? Correct. Thank you. Thank so you, I, I am now going to move that the recommendation be approved subject to us delegating the power to planning and the legal department to introduce a condition or agreement that there is not to be a bar without it coming back to planning committee. Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. As per the previous items of business, so I'll now conduct the vote by individual names. Turning firstly to Councillor Dave Cummings, I'm putting you on screen now. If you could unmute your mic and confirm your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Now moving to Councillor Hansen. Councillor Hansen, I'm pinning you to the screen now. If you could confirm your vote with your mic unmuted, please. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Hansen. Now move to Councillor Thompson. Just pinning you to the screen. If you could please unmute your mic and confirm your vote. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. I'll now move on to Councillor Lavelle. Councillor Lavelle, if you could unmute your microphone and confirm your vote. Just reconfirm that, please. Agreed. Thank you. I'll now move to Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy, if you could unmute your microphone, please, and confirm your vote. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. I'll now come to Councillor Marat. If you could unmute your microphone, please, and confirm your vote. Agreed. Thank you, Councillor Marat. Now come to Councillor Juarez. If you could unmute your microphone, please, and confirm your vote. Agree. Thank you, Councillor Juarez. Yeah. I'll now move on to Councillor Conception. Councillor Conception, you're now on screen. If you could unmute your mic and confirm your vote. Agree. Thank you, Councillor Conception. And lastly, we come to the Chair. If you could confirm your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you, Chair. On that basis, the voting is there for eight in favour and one against, and the recommendation as amended is carried. Chair, if we can move to our next item of business, please. Uh, which is 35 Prospect Vale. Um, and I'm a little unclear on this because I have John Crawley down, but I'm not sure if he's wishing to speak or not, because I also have there's no request from the applicant or agent to actually speak. Hi, we have an updated list of Mr. Carney present. Yes, Mr. Carney, that's correct. And would you like to speak, Mr. Carney? Uh, I can give a brief overview, yes. Yes, if you would, yes. Yeah, you. by all means, by all means. Uh, thank you, committee, and thank you, Chair, for allowing me to speak today. Uh, my name is John Carney. Uh, I'm an architect at Tracked Architect, Architecture, and I am acting as agent on behalf of Red Sun Properties Limited. The site is located at 35 Prospect Vale, uh, opposite Newsham Park, within the Newsham Park Conservation Area, and seeks to convert dilapidated Victorian property into five one-bed apartments. The property is in much need of restoration due to a tired aesthetic poor internal condition and overgrown surrounding grounds. There are no extension works proposed in this scheme. As such, the style of the property and the conservation area will be retained. As recommended in the conservation officer's consultation, the proposals are deemed not to be, uh, to be unharmful to the setting of the Newsham Park conservation area. Uh, and any additional details, I proposed additional windows will be installed and detailed as per suggested condition eight 
of the case officer's report in the style of the local vernacular, aiming to breathe life into a beautiful property without harming the character of Prospect Vale. In terms of objections, the main issues that have been raised are in relation to parking and security. Uh, since these objections have been raised, can I just check last, yeah, that's the right, the right plan. Uh, since these objections have been raised, the parking space has been omitted. Uh, please note that the site's proximity to Prescott Road provides excellent transport links for local residents. And in replacement of the parking access that was previously included, a secure pedestrian gated fob access point uh, will be installed to mitigate any potential through routes that may cause any concern in relation to antisocial behaviour. Uh, the property is in dire need of regeneration and will provide a positive contribution to the local street scene whilst complying with Liverpool's adopted policy and the council's design standards. Uh, as detailed in the committee report, uh, Liverpool City Council's internal consultation have raised no objections to the proposals and we look forward in anticipation to hopefully a positive determination uh, today. So thank you for letting me speak, guys, and I welcome any questions. Are there any questions? It would seem not. So can I now invite Gary McGinty to address the committee? Have we got Gary there? Well, can I invite Hello. Them? Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, Gary. Hello there. Can carry on okay. and address the committee for yeah. up to three minutes. That's no problem at all. Thanks, Simeon, for giving me the opportunity um, to speak today. Um, I've just got one clarification that I just for, for a point of order, really. Are we now accepted that the revised drawing just shown by um, what's his name? I forgot his name. John. Sorry, John. Um, that is the correct um, drawing going forward. Yeah. There is, no, there is no vehicle access proposed now. No. Off, no off, vehicle off, access. Off. No. That's that's okay. exactly. A lot of that was my concern was the vehicle access. So mm -hmm. rather go and talk that talk about that again. I just want to point out condition two of the recommended grant from plan permission. Can we have that amended, please? to actually include that drawn, um, I think it's Rev C, um, because the conditions still refer to the previous drawn. Um, that's possible. Um, and just in relation to that, yeah, I, we still have concerns in relation to the, the pedestrian entrance um, for obvious reasons. I know John said there's going to be a fob, um, but unfortunately it will be left to the residents of Haverstock Road to police this. It, it may really, you know, it might be unregulated. We can't control uh, nighttime use. Um, this property is literally three metres away from my front door, give or take an extra two. Um, and we have still concerns in relation to the rear access. Now, there is an existing pedestrian access within the controlled alley gate system, which is to the north of that drawn, um, shown by John, up the side of the, the bikes. Um, and probably we could we could request, re request that um, they may use that as a, a as a means of pedestrian access rather than actually open onto the um, Haverstock Road, because all residents in that area really have only access to the rear of the properties is through the controlled alley gate system for obvious reasons. This would be a precedent set in that actually you can access a rear of a property from the public realm, essentially, and that would cause us concerns because um, I, we can't police this. Um, and just one thing on that drone is, uh, just I just noticed the drone uh, there is, the wheelie bins are located at a much higher level than the actual entrance, and there's actually steps up and down to those wheelie bins. It just to confirm if the wheelie bins going out the rear entrance, or will they be brought to the front pavement um, to Prospect Vale? Um, yeah. and, and, and will and just when I finish, you can talk. This and just I do I do accept John's argument that because of a close proximity to public transport, there is an abundance of on-street parking available on Prospect Vale. That the council should consider relaxing the requirement of parking. Um, in this instance, because then it would alleviate uh, the requirement for a rear entrance off Haverstock Road, which would be out of precinct and out of character with the area. I have my own issue in terms of the mix of flats. Um, my only concern is that uh, sustainability doesn't mean convert everything to one bedroom flats. Um, sustainability is sustainability in the long run. Uh, maybe a more desirable mix of apartments, maybe a three bedroom apartment, a two bedroom apartment, a one bedroom apartment, may be more progressive and sustainable in the future given that all the joint houses on uh, uh, Prospect Vale are predominantly single or semi-detached large family dwelling houses, and which has moved that in the previous years. They had, there was flats, I will accept there was apartments and flats, but in the previous years there have been a number of conversions back to family 
uh, large independent family homes. And again, by putting five uh, small flats, which is kind of out of character of the area, may upset the imbalance that would trigger a further conversion and a further conversion. Before we know it, we're back to um, multiple single um, small units within a very uh, unique area within Liverpool um, at the moment. And really, that's all to conclude. As long as the condition two is amended to include Rev C, um, the drawing that John previously drawn, um, uh, I'd be happy with that, essentially. Uh, thank you for your time. Hi, uh, can I just quickly comment on that, just to uh, put Gary's mind at rest in a few areas? Uh, in terms it of the... It is not the usual, excuse me a minute, it's oh, not sorry. usual to just have a to and fro. Oh, so apologies, what I'm going apologies. to do is I'm going to invite the other person who wants to speak, then we will hand over to the planning officer. And if the matters are not addressed satisfactorily, I'm going to call you back, if I may, John. Yeah. Is that all right? That's the yes, usual way we do things. So I'd like to call on now Ray Bolter to address the committee, please. Hello, everybody. Ray, yes, hello. Yeah, it's Roy, not Ray. Can you all hear me? Yes. OK, so I've been resident in uh, 33 Prospect Vale for 30 years. Um, my property is next door. Um, for the 25 of the 30 years that we've been here, that was a single family home. Um, for the last five years, it's been empty and semi derelict. So actually, I do welcome the, the fact it's been um, developed. But I'm really concerned about the the um, the five flats. Um, for those that don't know Prospect Vale, where we are, it's a very quiet um, cul-de-sac, uh, mainly family homes. But in recent years, there's been some HMOs opened up, which has sort of changed the character of the road. So further traffic and further residents are a concern for us. Um, we've been told by other parties that this is going to be this is aimed at five um professional uh, flats for professional couples um if that's the case then that could be up to 10 vehicles which is a concern um i support the fact that the haverstock road entrance has changed but i'm really concerned about um the pedestrian access for the last five years i've been more or less the uh, security guard for that house next door um who was never on site, just left the house uh, fall into ruin. I've spent the last five years uh, chasing people, cutting through uh, substance abuse users that have been in the house. Um, I've stopped it being broken into twice. So, you know, I do welcome this, um, this change of purpose, but to have five flats up to 10 people is a real concern. And I'd like to be reassured that it won't go further than that. And I'd also like to question, you know, it, it's a big house, but five flats, it to me seems excessive. Thank you, Roy. I'm going to hand over to our planning officer now who will address some of these issues. And if we still need some clarification um, from John Carney, uh, we'll go back to him. But it's over to the planning officer, John, please. Yep, thank you, Chair. Um, again, you've got a full report in front of you, which um, I think addresses most of the issues uh, that have been raised by the uh, the, the two objectors there. Uh, the first point um, is to reassure uh, the first speaker that the um, amendment has been made. There is a tabled update note um, that's been circulated to you as members uh, which references the new plan and the revision C accordingly. So absolutely assure the first speaker that that um, parking bay that was coming off Haverstock Road has now been removed. In relation to the proposed uh, pedestrian access, uh, again, I understand the point that's being raised that um, most of the rear accesses are onto the um, gated alleyway. Uh, unusually, this property backed onto the head of a cul-de-sac effectively and therefore accesses directly onto the street. Um, however, given the relatively small number of flats proposed um, and that there is alternative access from the front, I don't necessarily perceive the problems to be uh, as significant as perhaps the uh, local residents do. 
Um, there's no reason why they wouldn't be equally concerned about their own security within the flats. And hopefully um, that uh, gate uh, shouldn't present any particular problems. Um, in relation to car parking, um, yes, there is. Um, uh, the, the, the scheme doesn't provide any car, car parking space now. Um, the one space that was being provided, what has now been deleted. So um, the space that would be available would have to be on street. However, uh, your officers, including those in highways, are satisfied that um, the street can accommodate that additional traffic without any undue impact on highway safety or indeed residential amenity. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind that because this is in a conservation area, it is important to try and maintain uh, the areas to the front um, as uh, gardens and open spaces um, and keep the boundary walls because they all contribute to the character of the conservation. So that has been an, an issue for us as officers uh, when we've been uh, considering this application. Um, again, in terms of the number of flats, um, it's not set out in detail in your report. Um, but we are satisfied that the overall uh, number, the, the, sorry, the size of the accommodation um, meets your uh, SPG standards. Um, they're actually quite generous, uh, if I recall, um, in terms of the overall floor space. Uh, certainly, they're well in excess of the standards set out in your SPG. Um, and again, we're satisfied that a property of this size can satisfactorily accommodate uh, five flats. So for all of those reasons, Chair, we're happy to recommend approval uh, subject to that amended plan um, and happy to answer any particular questions. I'm not sure whether you want to ask the architect if he's got any particular uh, other points that he wants to add, but happy to answer any questions, Chair. Um, so I don't know if you do want to come in, John. I do think the matters have been addressed myself. But is there anything else you'd like to say, John? Uh, just, in, just in response to Gary's query about the refuse, uh, yes, it will be uh, taken out okay. as possible. Carry on, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, right. it was originally uh, on the lower level, which is obviously going to uh, cause issues. So I've uh, raised the, the the level of the bins, so it's taken out to the to the front. Okay. And can I invite any questions? from our planning committee members now, please. Can, uh, can I ask another question, please? No, I'm sorry. It's from planning committee members now. Are there any planning committee members who'd like to have a question answered? In that case, I'm going to move on to the recommendation. And the recommendation is, uh, just bear with me, I have to keep swapping apart, uh, around. The recommendation on this one is, can I move that the recommendation as amended be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. In accordance with the procedure as per previous items of business, and I'll go through members individually. Firstly, Councillor Cummings, please confirm your vote and have your mic on, please. Thank you, Councillor Cummings. Councillor Hanson next. I'm just pinning you to screen. Can you unmute your microphone and confirm your vote? Good Thank you, Councillor Hanson. Councillor Thompson next. Please confirm your vote. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Lavelle next. Confirm your vote. Read. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy next. If you could confirm your vote, please, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy is absent, so no vote will be taken from Councillor Kennedy. Moving to Councillor Marat. Can you just unmute your mic, please, Councillor Marat? Just reconfirm, please. Agreed. Thank you. Next, Councillor Juarez. Councillor Juarez. Agree. Thank you. 
Castle Conception. Please confirm your vote, Tony. Agree. And the chair, please, if I may. Can you come back to me? I'll come back to you now, Malcolm. Thank you. Yes, I, I'm agreeing. I agree. Thank you. That concludes voting on this application. Just to confirm the outcome of the vote, that is nine in favour, none against. Therefore, the application subject to those amendments is approved. Thank you. And can we go on now to agenda item eight, which is 108 Edinburgh Road, Liverpool 7. Chair, yeah, before, before we proceed, yes, uh, in terms of the technical limitations on virtual meetings, we have a defined time span within which we must conduct our proceedings. At this juncture, I need to report to yourself and members that agenda item 11 has a large number of, of members of the public registered to speak. And I request that from individuals concerned that this item be brought forward and considered now to ensure it is determined today. Well, as long as, as long as that's agreeable to the committee, yes. Do members have any comments or, and or are you happy for we, us to proceed and take item 11 now? If there's no comments, we'll proceed with item 11. Thank you. In which case we'll move straight on to item 11 for which there are a number of speakers and we'll start firstly with the applicants and their agent. Could I remind uh, Mr Nicholson and Ms, and Ms Haykello, the agent and applicant, that you'll need to unmute your mic to speak and uh, if there's a presentation that's going to be displayed on screen now for you. Um, I'd right. like to come in here now because I seem to have um, Mr Nicholson and uh, Naomi Haykello to speak. Yes, is that correct? Yes. So Mr Nicholson first then? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Carry on. Uh, Guy Nicholson, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but Thank you're you. not that loud. Apologies. Uh, I'll speak as loud as I can. Yes, that's much better. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to address the committee in these challenging times. I'm Guy Nicholson, a chartered electrical engineer and head of grid integration at Statcraft UK. Statcraft is owned by the Norwegian government and is the largest renewable energy generator in Europe. Statcraft owns batteries, wind and hydropower stations in the British Isles and is investing £600 million in the UK in the next five years. The planning proposal you see before you by Statcraft at Carnegie Road is for batteries and energy management infrastructure and is deliberately sited adjacent to the National Grid Lister Drive substation. I'm aware of several objections to our proposal based on the use of the site for a car boot sale at present. Statcraft takes great care to ensure that we have the legal rights to use and access any site which we develop and we have ensured that we have negotiated those rights at Carnegie Road. So let, let's move to the purpose of our application. Integrating renewable energy into the electricity grid is a growing challenge as the volume of renewable energy increases and as old power stations close. For example, on Easter Monday, National Grid had sufficient renewable energy to supply the whole demand of the entire electricity grid but it needed to turn on 17 fossil fuel power stations to keep the grid stable, which resulted in burning excessive fossil fuels and CO2 emissions. So National Grid is looking for new ways of stabilising the grid without burning fossil fuel. And this is relevant regionally as Fiddler's Ferry power station in Warrington closed at the end of March. In January, 
Statcraft won two contracts with Natural Grid to provide stability services without burning fossil fuels. These sites at Lister Drive have been developed to satisfy these contracts, which will enable greater and faster decarbonisation of our energy supplies and help meet our net zero target. I'll now hand over to Naomi from our planning consultants, Arcus. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Naomi, I Great. can hear you clearly. Um, thank you. And um, could we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, hello, uh, I'm Naomi Heikolo, a chartered planner with Arcus Consultancy Services and the agent for this application. As mentioned by the applicant, there is a national and local need for this type of essential development. Carnegie Road has been identified following an assessment of sites throughout the country and the greater Liverpool area. We are pleased to see that this is reflected in your planning officer's recommendation for approval. There are limited locations for siting this kind of development. The site is adjacent to the National Grid substation, which will prevent the need for lengthy transmission cables and enables efficient transmission to and from the National Grid. Um, you can see on the, the plan on the slide that the National Grid uh, substation is just to the left of the red line area, so that's how close um, the facility is. Brownfield land is an industrial, in an industrial area is more appropriate for this facility than residential or countryside locations. The proposed use is compatible with the local plan designation of primarily industrial area as confirmed in the officer's report. And could we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. The site is currently used for container storage and there is no formal employment at the site. The site has been used for a twice weekly car boot sale, although we note that this will no longer be proceeding, regardless of whether this development goes ahead. I would like to reiterate that there are no alternative sites for this essential infrastructure, which needs to be adjacent to the substation. Could you move to the next slide, please? And you can see the substation infrastructure just to the rear of the containers there. Um, the applicant has engaged proactively with the council through a pre-application inquiry. The development will not have any adverse effects on the environment or residential <laughs> amenity, as confirmed in the officer's recommendation for approval. No objections have been received from technical or statutory consultees, further demonstrating that this is an appropriate site for the application. Could you move to the next slide, please? And that's just the entrance along Carnegie Road. Um, that wall that you see there will be replaced by a uh, palisade fencing for security purposes. As stated in the officer's report, the facility would improve existing operational public utilities and is therefore directly supported by local plan policy EP14. The development complies fully with all relevant local and national planning policies. Finally, um, this development will fa facilitate the efficient use of renewable energy and help to reduce Liverpool's carbon footprint in light of the climate emergency, which was declared in Liverpool last year. This declaration confirms that Liverpool City Council is supportive of carbon-free energy initiatives and the low carbon economy. The application will also contribute to meeting the UK's commitment under the Climate Change Act to reduce carbon emissions to net zero by 2050 and help to implement the UK's National Energy and Climate Plan, which states that additional energy storage and system balancing development is required. Uh, there are no planning reasons why this development should not be approved, and as recommended, we therefore respectfully request that consent is granted. Thank you. Uh, thank you um, for that. Can I... Um now ask the planning committee if they've got any questions for those two presenters. Yes, yes. Come in, please, whoever it I'll, is. I'll go first, yeah, David, please. Um, right, Dave, could, go on. Could you confirm um, what, if any, uh, employment opportunities will be in this uh, project? Is Guy or Naomi going to answer that one? 
I can answer. Um, okay, Naomi, you go ahead. So um, the proposed development, it will result in approximately 60 construction jobs during the peak of construction and uh, for uh, operational jobs um, to, to, to operate the development. Um, I, I would also like to note that currently there are no, there are no formal um, employment, there's no formal employment at the site. Where so it can't be considered to be used as, as an, in an employment use. When it's in use, if it's in use and it gets the permit, what would be the process for recruitment locally? I'm not aware of that. I might hand that over to Guy if he can provide any details as the applicant. Guy, if yeah. you'd like to come in here, please. Yeah, so this is uh, specialist equipment. So um, that would be down to the contractors that we would bring in to uh, to to run the project. Um, but we'd make sure that any jobs that were um, involved with the site uh, were, were advertised locally. Thank you, Guy. Uh, well, can I just else answer your question? Yeah, I'm just comments? seeking confirmation. <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeking confirmation on this. So with regard to the construction of the project, that will be taken forward by local contractors. Can you confirm that? I, I can't confirm that it will definitely be carried out by local contractors. This is specialised work, but we would expect local the contractor appointed to involve uh, local subcontractors uh, as appropriate, and we would expect that to bring uh, some uh, uh, income to the local economy in terms of uh, contractors needing to uh, stay locally or um, uh, services that they uh, are, are required to um, bring to the project, which can be provided locally. They would certainly choose local uh, uh, services where they are available, yes. Thank you, Guy. Are there any other questions? Hi, am I able to speak? Um, am I able to speak? Only people who are members of the planning committee. Oh, OK. Oh, wait, I'm okay. So I'd like now um, to start um, on our fairly extensive list of people that I have here who wish to speak. Um, I'd like to remind you all that you need to make separate points, not the same point, and that we would like you to address planning issues only, please. So can I invite, first of all, uh, Natik Fatah. Yes, I've probably said that wrong. Natif, please. Chair, I've checked the list. I can't see them present. So our next speaker would, would be, be, I believe, Ad Adeliki Balakun. Yes, please. If they'd like to speak. And, and uh, councillors? Yes, um, we can hear you. I believe uh, people, yeah. The occupiers of this particular property, they've been there for a longer time and they've been contributing to the economy of uh, uh, the local area, uh, preventing crime and bringing um, the locals together. Taking the property away from them will render them uh, their livelihood uh, void. And uh, number two, um, it will expose the area to Brenda. criminal activity. Oh, and, and therefore, therefore, that's why I'm objecting. Uh, that's why I'm against uh, the project. Me too. And um, I, would, I wouldn't want the livelihood of the locals taken away from them because this is what they've been doing. And if that is going to happen, what alternative have you got in place for the local who have been on this property over these years? Um, right. Um, then I've got somebody else in the background who seems to be speaking as well. I don't know where that is coming from. No. So if I could just chair, if I can just intervene, yes, please, I'm going. I'm going to mute all speakers at this point. And at this stage, I will apply the mute and will remind everyone that to only speak when requested to do so 
by the chair, one person at a time, so everyone can hear clearly. Uh, based on our list, our next speaker is a Mr. Stephen Dyro. So if the chair would not agree, I will bring them in now on pin them to screen and ask them to unmute their microphone. Stephen Dyro. Guys? Yes. Hello? Carry on, Stephen. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Dyro. Um, I'm the current occupier of this place. And uh, I'm strongly against this application on the basic that uh, I've been on this place for more than 22 years since I got to England. And uh, I I'm a British citizen, and uh, since I've been to this place over 22, have been working, paying tasks, and involved a lot of employees in the past. I've employed more than 1,000 employees in, in the local area in Liverpool. So, and uh, at the same time, at the moment, the market that I'm organizing that involves a local, local people, and to the extent that weekly, it been nearly about 800 to 1,000 uh, um, uh, community together. A lot of them come in um, to socialize. Um, so elderly people that they don't have uh, people to visit them at home, they see this market for the past 30 years as a place where they find their happiness. So, and uh, at the same time, because of these effects on the community, yes, that is why I'm strongly against this application. And at the end, again, I will still lie because I've been here over 22 years. And uh, I, I actually built half of this warehouse. And the landlord, he have not um, organized with me to settle me. The other, I've not had anything from the, uh, from, the, from the company that is coming to take over, which they are trying to use their being a big company. They are trying to oppress a company that has been here for 22 years. They are coming to uh, take that opportunity and they, they don't want to consider the look the people that they are actually in this system and under me i have about nearly 70 uh, uh, tenants under me 70 tenants which they are doing their own local they are doing their small small businesses they keep their family together so taking all this in a way is going to be too much on the community and uh, I, uh, that is why i'm strongly against this application it will be unfair if they just come to liverpool and to take away what I've built for 22 years. Because I've built this place for over 22 years with all my life, with my family. I've never been a jobless person. I've only paid my tasks, and at the same time, I'm always, always employ people, create a lot of things to the community. So that is why I'm struggling against this application until they sort me out. Because I will, yeah, if they sort me out, then that will be good. Thank you, Stephen. So yeah, can we yeah. have Charlie Hale next, please? Chair, I believe we have a J James Rowley first. Jimmy Rowley. That's correct, Mike. So James, Jimmy Rowley for next, and then Charlie Hale. Hello, um, hi, I'm Charlie Hale. Um, what I'm more concerned about is um, we use this as storage for our business. Um, and there's a lot of people who do that. And I'm worried about where are we all meant to go? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm worried about where we all meant to go and how long and time do we have to do this in, which is quite concerning, really. OK, thank you, Charlie. I'd like to invite Jimmy Rowley now. Jimmy, would you like to speak now, please? Mr. Rowley, just can you unmute your microphone if you can hear this, please, so we can hear you. Well, that does not seem to be working, even though I've got uh, Jimmy Rowley's initials up on the screen as if he is present in the meeting. Shall we go on to the next objector and try and get Jimmy back later, Mike? 
I would suggest we do, yes, Chair. Yeah. Mr Rowley hasn't unmuted his microphone. Okay. So we'll move on to our next we'll one. We'll have Lawrence Murphy now, please. Lawrence? Lawrence, are you there? I can't see them present on our no, list, no, Chair. So can we move on to Geoffrey Goody, please? Geoffrey Goody? Again, I don't believe Mr Goody's present, Chair. So I suggest we move on to our next speaker. Uh, which would be Collins Dyro. Mr Dyro, you're now on screen. If you could unmute your microphone, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Carry on. All right, so basically um, I strongly um, oppose against this application um, on the basis that the current occupier um, has is being settled there for the past 22 years. Um, it would seem that the current um, occupier has um, welcomed over a thousand employees during this whole duration of him being there and currently he has 78 tenants. I will repeat that. Currently, he has 78 tenants. So that means that they have financial leases towards the property. Um, and that has been done for, I mean, that was, I mean, it will, they wanted to continue that for the, for the future. So what I would say is that the current um, proposal would have their um, warehouse shut down and um, the the erect uh, management would um, the company would be um, would take over. Now my thing is the current company that wants to take over they have not sorted out um, negotiations. So one of the uh, speakers said that negotiations were sorted um, with the with the landlords. But I would strong, I'm strongly against that. I would disagree because any professional company would have to sort out negotiations with the occupier, not just the landlord. I'll explicitly say that again. So negotiations, even though the landlord owns the property, he has rented it out and the current occupier has been 22 years. So therefore, it only makes sense for the, the, the company to go and negotiate, not just with the landlord, but with the occupier. But instead, no talks and negotiations have taken place between the current occupier. So that is um, one reason why I strongly against it. Uh, another reason. Okay. I um, excuse me, we've, you've made yourself clear on that one, but I don't think it's a planning issue. But you've got another reason, so you go ahead with that. Okay. So I was going to say. So the current um, company that wants to take place. I was listening to the speakers, and they said that they're going to have. Um, four management jobs. Now, that's not really, that will not help and benefit the community because taking away 78 people and their financial ties to the company to replace to replace it with four, doesn't the numbers don't really add up there. And in terms of uh, the one of the speakers said that 60 people um, will be do, um, 60 um, construction working jobs. But then when the, uh, when the other speaker pressed him on it and asked him whether they could be tied down to the local community and the construction, the local construction community, he, he couldn't confirm that. So, again, that is then suggesting that, well, he has no control over if, it, if it, it's going to go. So there's no certainty towards what will help the community. And... Um, <clears throat> And that's um, then I would also like to say that um, the <clears throat> the crime rate of the um, so the, the crime rate of the community. So over the years, the crime rate was high in the past. And because of the um, current um, <clears throat> business and the car boot sale. So the current car boot sale, as, as I said, I don't want to repeat that, but it has 78 people and that's plus. So many from the community come in and the crime over the years has um it used to be very 
used to be very uh, prominent before because the house, like the warehouse, was, um, set out on fire many times, and even like the police have actually stated that that that, um, that area was very prone to crime. Like there's even situations where people were stealing cars and stuff like that. However, as the community has got got gotten closer, the um, just solely due to the company, the current occupier, because tenants from different houses. Pardon? I can see someone's. Sorry, someone's muted. You need to draw your remarks to a conclusion now, if you would. All right. So, um, I was saying that yes, yeah, so basically the crime rate has changed, and uh, that is just due to the current occupier because the community have gotten closer, and because the people, even because the community and the residents can come to the market and invest their like money and generate income for their families. Therefore, it makes sense that the community that the crime rate is going to go down because if the general as a whole the local community has more money, then there's not going to be a need to do certain things. And <clears throat> um, yeah, I would just propose I'm going to draw that to a conclusion, but I would just propose that if um, the application does go through, that the current occupier has to be settled with. Um, um, sorry, it has to be settled with a like an agreement, a financial agreement, because what's going to happen to the local tenants, the 78 current local tenants? Sorry, tenant, we've got your points now, Collins, but right, you know, you. we have to deal with planning issues and they are matters of tenancy. Um, but I'm sure our planning officer will further on that and our legal advisors. So I'd like to invite now um, Funmate Dairo to speak, please. And me, are you here to speak now? Yes, hello. Hello. Carry on. Yes, we can oh, hear you. Oh, sorry. Oh, thanks for allowing me to be uh, in this meeting this morning. I mean, most of the things that I was going to talk about is um, already been mentioned by the previous uh, people that have talked. I am talking this morning to oppose this application. And uh, for me, uh, there's a lot of worry about this application, and I know Collins has mentioned it as well. Uh, Naomi mentioned that they only have four operational things that will be looking into that. But that is a lot of worry for a place that has been secluded and has been exposed to a lot of crime, a lot of antisocial behaviors. And um, leaving four people and a battery charge in that area is just going to start all over again and put all the residents in, uh, in danger. Also, I, I'm I'm just seriously worried about um, about the danger. I know, you know, probably in the in the application they've explained, um, you know, the danger and everything about this battery because I'm no I'm I'm not used to battery. I don't know much about it. But what I know is that we, we, I'm not really com, com, you know convinced about the danger this is going to pose to the to the community around there and also the noise from this battery. I'm not sure whether this is appropriate because Naomi was presenting the place as is is a predominantly a um, you know like a um, like a uh, industrial area. Naomi has forgotten that there's lots of residential areas surrounding this place, so it's not just predominantly a uh, a place where is uh, you know all factories there. So. Granting this application is going to be that that cause a lot of problem for the for this area. And let's leave the aspect about the landlord and the uh, current uh, tenant as separate. But what about the community? What about the mental effect of this on the community? What about the social aspect of it on the community? What about this? Where, where is our spirit of community going in Liverpool? If everything is now being replaced by battery, by everything, and taking the liberty of the community away from them by force, by fire, this is not right. People should be allowed to continue in the spirit, to continue to be happy. We, we am demanding that because of this COVID-19. We've been through a lot. And bringing these people to now depress people who are already depressed with the effect of COVID-19, that is not good. So I want the council to consider all this and look thoroughly into the application and make sure, you know, 
<laughs> is this what we wanted? And I'm not sure about what Naomi is saying that the, 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 the current use of market in the, in the, on the land it's not it's not it's not on anymore no it is on i do not agree i think that's a propaganda for now me to come and say that so i want the council to thoroughly look into all the objections of this application before they consider it and if they consider it they need to make other alternative marketplace for the residential areas and the community thank you thank you for me um, but it isn't actually um, part of the planning process that we have to provide an alternative. I'd like to make that clear. Um, Vincent Brown now, please. Vincent, would you like to carry on? We can see you. We don't know if we can hear you yet. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Right, I did catch a bit of a Right. Uh, there's a couple of instances uh, when they put the application is first. He said negotiated rights. Well, I'm aware he hasn't negotiated with the uh, the present occupier. So, for uh, him to negotiate with the owner, surely the occupier should be included. Um, he also said the markets can discontinue anyway, regardless of this application. Well, that's, uh, as far as I know, it's a lie. The markets are going to continue. Um, there's no car boot sales around the area, they've all been going, so it is a local um, meeting point and socialising and what have you. He's been there for over 20 years. I've actually had storage in there since about 98, that makes it 28, 22 years. Uh, I own the shop and I need the storage there. I don't really want to go elsewhere. Um, the 78 yeah, tenants, containers, tenants. All them container tenants. It goes to show you that the the application uh, is the most opposed of all the applications that have been on today. Uh, and this suggests that it's you know it's not welcome. So I uh, totally oppose it and hopefully it gets rejected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carry on now to Anthony Steer. Anthony? We don't appear to have Mr. Steer present, now? Chair. Not present, right. Um, well, we now have, um, oh, I have problems saying this one, Ed Bay, Amy, Stephen Dyro. Is he present to speak? I believe we may already heard heard from Mr. Dyro oh, earlier on. I believe. Personally. Well, it's a, it's a different, very first name. So we're on to Natalie Reeves Billing. Hello. If Natalie yeah, would like to um, speak. Just to say something, sorry. Um, there's two Stephen Dyros. There's um one which is spoken already, and then I'm waiting to speak. So I think. Uh, well, if you might... you'd like to speak now, the second mm. Stephen. Okay. Yes. Yes, I'll be quick. Um, just Thank to. You. Just to, I think most of the points have already been said. I don't uh, overlap what's been said. Um, but I think the main concern is just based on the community because as the current situation we're in right now, coronavirus is quite a strong thing and it's showing the importance of good mental health. And for a lot of people, elderly people, they can't uh, show that. And coming to the market and coming to a place where they can see their friends where they don't normally wouldn't come out, um, that's the way to socialise and for them it may not be seen by a lot of the community but that's a very good way to improve their mental health to get socialised and to help them live longer <clears throat> and as I said before I think it's already been said that when Naomi said that the car beat cell isn't, is not continuing that obviously isn't the case because right now because the coronavirus isn't continuing because of ob obvious social distancing laws but before then and when it finishes it's going to continue and um yeah um just in general like uh the new i understand that there's always a need for renewable uh, uh renewable power plants renewable stuff because that is the way to forward but you have to look at what you're taking away from the community as well as what you're bringing to it and i think with this application it's a very sensitive application the community especially with the past crime rate the way it was before the fly tipping. Fly tipping was a major issue. Fly tipping has decreased immensely due to the surveillance of the 
could not be higher. And um, the police, as I said, can probably back that how a lot of things have dropped. So that just for the council to consider everything um, and to ensure that if the application is approved of how these problems can be also sorted out as well. Um, but yeah, I agree that it should be like uh, stick to planning, planning aspects, but thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, can we now have Natalie Reed spill in, please? We don't appear to have a present chair. And so it's then Tess O'Hara. Is Tess around? The chair doesn't appear to be present. Uh, and then there's Lynn Walker. No chair. That's our last speaker then, therefore. So that's the last speaker. And I think I've nearly lost the plot now, but I think we're ready to go over to our planning officer now. Hello. That's correct, Chair. Yes, we are now. Yeah. So if we could pass over to our planning officer and then we'll take any Julie, questions. Julius. The, the Hello. Yes. Hello. Come in. Hi, um, my name is Julius Du Jemi, and I uh, thought I was registered to uh, talk as well. But please, well, could you help me check? Uh, uh, if you would check because I haven't got this name down. Ju Julius, could you just confirm confirm your full name, please? Julius Olubenga Du Jemi. Uh, I don't appear to have you. Um, I don't appear to have you on my list, but uh, if you've had the invite, then yes, you do have the opportunity to speak briefly, Chair Julius, Potter. Okay. You can I'm going to speak, but All can right. you keep it planning issues, please? I and will do. not been said before, please. I will do. Um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm actually a partner to um, Yemi Dairo da, da Spock. Um, I own the container business, and uh, as we, um, as it's been highlighted, we have not been contacted at all by the owner. And I have an agreement with um, some of the tenants, like they said, we have over 75 tenants, and I have an agreement uh, with them up to 2024. Um, this is because the landlord has kept the lease open and we've been here for a very long time. Right. Another thing I would like to say is um, there are over 347 national grid substations in the UK Excellent. by research. And one question I keep asking myself is why this development in our local community? I look at the application that they put through, I read them thoroughly, and I discovered that the developer mentioned that this is the first of its kind, the first of, uh, uh, of the energy management center in the UK. Is this another dump site for us? Has this technology been proven anywhere? We know battery storage, we know it's a proven technology, but when um, from the application, it's going to be a two-way communication, which is unique. Um, this this makes this application unique. So, therefore, I'm asking if this is not the only location that is close to the national grid in the UK, can the developer explain why they they picked this site? Because there are other sites um, in the UK where the national grid, there as in there is vast land, there are vast amount of land uh, close to the site which are mainly they are even on the motorways we've seen that and that's one and also the developer mentioned that there is no noise effect as far as i'm aware i looked at the application and there is no environmental um environmental impact assessment has not been considered for this application this the statement they make cannot be true because i am an engineer by training and I know the, the decibel for these coolers they put on there, the batteries, they need to get it, they need to get the temperature down and they will need um, those fans to cool them down. That generate noise. It generate noise and there, there are hazardous factors as well. The discharge from the battery, where are they gonna store it? Is it gonna be, this business has helped to keep waste off our site. Now, if this application, if it's granted, the, the implication is that 
Uh, I know people have talked about dump site uh, flight tipping. The implication is that um, we're going to be some of the ways that this site has been taken care of, that we normally take care of. Why on this site? Um, we will start seeing them on the street. We will start seeing them in our, in, in, on the sea. Again, in, fine, in conclusion as well, um, this business brings, the market itself brings people together every Sunday. It's a livelihood for us. It's an opportunity. With respect, chat. Julius, this point has been made about the socialization. Are there any other points that you've got that haven't been dealt with before, Julius? Yes, um, the, 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 the last one is the recycling part of our business. We, I'm not sure if you are aware that this site uh, managed a recycle um, plant, a mini recycle plant here, and we move items like um, clothing and um, toys down to various countries in the world, in, the, in Asia and in, and in uh, Africa. And we do, if, if we, if we stop this, we don't know how to explain to those kids or those people somewhere around the world whose minimum wage is less than one dollar a day that could not afford brand new clothes. And all they depends on is the services that we offer. Please, on this basis, I would like um, the counselors to look into this application critically and understand the impact on our society, on the globe as well, uh, uh, because no, it's not only in the UK, it affects people in other parts of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julius. But I do need to stress, and I'm sure my planning officer will do likewise, that we only deal with town planning law and the uh, unitary development plan, a land which is a land use issue, not about the leasing or buying and selling of land. But I'll hand over now to our planning officer. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chairman. Um, can everybody see and hear me? Chair. Thank you, John. Thank yes, you. John, we can. Thank you, Chair. Obviously, you've had uh, a very detailed presentation. There's a substantial report in front of you. Um, can I also draw to members' attention the additional tabled update note, which includes quite a number of later representations, uh, but also include uh, a letter from the solicitors who are acting on behalf of the owners, um, in which they um, address some of the issues that you've heard about the uh, lease arrangements and, uh, in particular, the point that the uh, premises were offered uh, to sale uh, to the current occupiers. Um, that, that, uh, that is on your table note. Uh, Chair, obviously this has uh, raised quite a lot of objections and it's clearly an important community facility uh, that provides employment for quite a number of people. Um, the issue, there's two sort of overlapping issues. One is the loss of the uh, business as a consequence of the tenancy arrangements and the lease uh, arrangements that are currently in place. That ultimately is a matter between the owner of the building, the main leaseholder and the uh, tenants that are then within the building. There is nothing that you as a planning authority can do to prevent the owner uh, deciding on a alternative use for that building. Um, so, for example, um, the tenants and the owner would be in exactly the same predicament if, for example, the current owner decided to have a different occupier uh, providing for um, long-term storage of um, containers or whatever. Um, so, so there's nothing that you can do to prevent that from happening. However, um, what you are entitled to consider um, in terms of land use planning matters is whether or not the loss of this employment site uh, is acceptable. Um, and that's the crux of the issue here uh, going forward. Um, clearly, the proposal is uh, limited in terms of the job opportunities it provides um, because it is simply for battery storage. Um, you've heard from the applicant talk about the 60 jobs that it would provide and the four permanent jobs it would provide. Um, your offer, the, the, the planning issue, as I say, is straightforward. It's whether or not um, the loss of employment land uh, is considered appropriate 
uh, having regard to the uh, benefits that would accrue from having um, battery storage and the sustainability benefits that accrue from that. I would point out that uh, a very similar uh, facility has been approved and I think implemented on the opposite side of the road. You've heard from the applicants as to why the site uh, needs to be in the location that it is. There are very few sites like this uh, across the country, is my understanding, that can provide this opportunity. And that's partly the reason why this has been selected. Um, just picking up a couple of the other points um, that have been raised, particularly by the last speaker, uh, about noise. Um, again, this is entirely within an industrial area. Um, there shouldn't be any reason why the batteries themselves would create um, noise over and above that that is associated with uh, the existing use of the surrounding land. Um, as far as I'm aware, the, the, at most it's a slight hum that comes uh, from, from the uh, facility. Um, but again, that might be something that the applicant pick up later. Um, and then in terms of crime and disorder, again, you've heard a number of people talk about that. There's no reason um, in your officer's view why this would of itself cause additional harm. I understand the point that is being made uh, about the existing facility providing a community resource and that has helped to alleviate some crime, the occupants of the building and so on. Uh, but I go back to the point that I made at the beginning that there is nothing that you as a planning authority should can do to control the overall uh, occupancy of that building. You can, however, consider whether or not the loss of the employment land is appropriate. And that ultimately is a matter for you as the members of this committee. Uh, your officer's view is clear in this report that on balance, the use of the land for battery storage is appropriate. Happy to answer any further questions, Chair. Yeah, I would like to ask a question to John. Um, uh, go ahead, Councillor Cummings. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, just to come back to the point that you mentioned, John, about the, the implication of, at this moment, the amount of employment and economic activity is going on on that site now compared to what will happen if this planning application is accepted. On that point, on that point, from my perspective, I would not want to, to support this planning application with as, as a consequence of the lack of economic activity that would go on, whereby the local, this city, the local, re, the local area, that economic activity is going on, which I fully support. Of course, I believe in renewable energy, and you know I want to state that straight straight away. So what 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 my concern would be is surely there could be a delay on this to see if. The, um, the, uh, the establishment which is there now could find somewhere else. Now, I don't know whether that, that can be done, but I, I will still state that I will not support this application in the context of the lack of economic activity that will go on compared to what is happening now. Would you like to comment on that, John, and then I'll see if there are any other questions. Chair, I, th I think Councillor Cummings um, was making a point rather than asking a specific question. Um, and I think his point is a reasonable one. As I said, it, it's ultimately a matter for you as the planning committee to consider uh, the implications of the loss of employment land in relation to um, this proposal. Uh, I think that's the, the, the point that Councillor Cummings was trying to emphasise. So are there any other questions? Yes, yes, please, Chair. Who's this yes, from? Malcolm. Malcolm, carry on. <coughs> the, 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 question, uh, the question I have for John is, I mean, I've been listening very carefully and I did, I did hear the, the number of 78 tenants and it, it did strike me that what we were talking about here was not so much a um, car boot sale as a market. Um, so the question I have is whether the planning officer is aware of whether this market is actually licensed. Um, the reason I ask that is because of my past knowledge of uh, 
how markets operate in Liverpool. I would have thought that an option for um, would have been referred to as tenants on the site um, and would have alternatives available available with them within the official market system. Uh, John, did you hear that clearly well, enough? I, I did hear that, Chairman. Uh, the, 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 the answer is yes, it does have a markets license. Uh, we've consulted with our markets officer and she has confirmed that the uh, premises do have a license um, and that has been in place for quite a number of years now. Okay, that, that's good clarification. Thank you. Uh, do you have a follow up on that then, Malcolm? No? Are there any other questions? Well, I, I think I, that, what, the point I'm making, Chair, is that there's obviously, I think, the, the, the markets in Liverpool will have a responsibility um, to deal with the matter where a piece of land that they have licensed is no longer available, but they have effectively tenants who are paying a, a fee to them uh, for the right to trade as market traders in the city. It's maybe not a planning um, point, but I do think following on from this that Liverpool markets will should take some responsibility uh, for the situation. Uh, Malcolm, could that responsibility extend to finding an alternative site, for instance? Or would it just be there be a refund? Would you be able to enlighten us I, on that? I wouldn't be able to answer that. As a, as right. As a, I'm no longer responsible for markets, but certainly either by finding an, uh, an alternative site, I would have taken as a personal responsibility if I was still in that position. Are there any other questions? Um, Chair? Yes, Myrna, uh, if you'd like to come in. Uh, I just want to make a comment, really, um, similar to what Councillor Cummings made, you know, that I, I don't feel comfortable um, with, with the loss of uh, this employment land um, you know although you know the proposed site is of uh, high importance to the applicant today because of its location to the um, proximity of the national grid nevertheless you know there, there is a big difference with the uh, amount of employ employable um, opportunities it creates at present. Um, maybe we need to defer this application till uh, suitable um, suitable um, um, suitable preparations that have been made by the current um, the, the current um, the, the current uh, persons is operating this um, this market facilities at that location um, because you know uh, I think you know seventy jobs seventy opportunities are quite uh, it, it's quite um, it's quite a significant number to me. Uh, yes, yeah, th thank you, Councillor Juarez. But you do realise that is not part of our planning committee responsibilities. Um, I don't know if the legal department would like to comment on that, but it isn't part of planning committee's remit as far as I have ever understood it. Thank, thank you, Chair. Briefly in terms of what the committee can and can't consider, but essentially you can consider relevant plan, planning matters. But what you have control over ultimately in, in, in this committee is the determination of the application before you. In terms of matters relating to the market licenses or other agreements which operate, these are governed by secondary legal processes which are not determined through the planning committee process. In terms of what's required of you today, it's ultimately to determine the application before you based on the information provided. Are there any other questions? Yeah, just to come back to um, what Mike has just said. Mike, could you please confirm with me uh, uh, on the issue that was raised by John about the uh, 
the uh, employment land issue. Um, can we can we defer or can we reject it on those issues? As I've said, there is more employment ac economic activity on that piece of land now than what will be later on if this proposal is accepted. I do I do I support the proposal as to what it's about, but I have the I have the concerns about the, the downturn in economic activity for local people there, and that's why I would support that issue. Is that acceptable to do that in this concept? As a member, you, you could legitimately move forward a proposal to refuse the application on the basis that its impact would result in the loss of employment, land and facilities. However, that's your discretion as an individual member. And any a resolution to refuse an application of committee, note that that would require the application then going forward to a further meeting for any such resolution to be reviewed and either confirmed or otherwise set aside in favour of approval of the application. But it's at your Mike, discretion. Uh, Mike, I would like to formally do that right here and now then. Yeah, can I suggest that we move to the to the vote? Can I, can well, I just ask a question? Uh, no, it's gone too far now for questions, but we now have a proposal, so I don't think I can present my vote. But can we have some clarification from Michael, please? By way of clarity, the ordinary process would usually be in the absence of members' comments. The chair would move a resolution based on the committee report and discussions at the meeting. At this juncture, Councillor Cummings, I believe, has sought to move a motion to refuse the application on the basis that the proposed development would result in the loss of employment, land and associated provisions within the area and have a harmful impact on the commercial viability of the adjacent area, if I understand correctly, in which case that motion to be valid will require a seconder. So does any member wish to second that motion? Please indicate clearly and I will switch to you and then bring your microphone on. In which case, in the absence of a seconder, that motion. Uh, sorry, uh, Anna. Michael, I wish to second that motion uh, for the same reasons as Councillor Cummings has indicated. I have, you know, I do understand the need for, you know, to. Uh, it, protect our environment and, you know, uh, the energy will uh, contribute to the air in our, in our city, but I do have to uh, object to it because of the loss of the employment land. Uh, so I, I'm asking the same. I'm supporting Councillor Cummings for now. Thank you, Councillor Juarez. Uh and can I speak before we hit, go to the vote on this, please? Thank you, Chair. I'm going to bring you in now, if I may. Um, I would like to um, urge people to vote against this because we're not losing employment land. We may be losing jobs for people, but we've got to remember also that this market only occurs on two days a week. Um, the market could be relocated, and I really do urge that that should happen because I don't want to see anybody lose um, their source of income and employment. But I am against this because it is still a valid industrial use that is being proposed. Not only that, it's environmentally friendly and sustainable, and there is no other site within the city that they can have this battery storage on. That was made clear in the planning notes. So I'm against this amendment or proposal rather. Thank you, Chair. I've now applied a mute to all microphones and participants. And at this juncture, we will firstly deal with Councillor Cummings' motion, the effect of which will be to recommend refusal and require a further report to a subsequent meeting of committee. All those in favour of the motion to refuse as put forward by Councillor Cummings, I will go by a name firstly to Councillor Cummings and bring you in and ask you to confirm verbally. Please put your mic on. Can you confirm your vote, Councillor Cummings? Yes, I can confirm my vote. Thank you. Next move to Councillor Hanson. If you could confirm your vote, please, and put your microphone on. 
Sorry, could you just confirm that? It wasn't clear. Yeah. Against, thank you, Councillor Hanson. Now moving to Councillor Thompson. Please confirm your vote. Abstain. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Lavelle. Please uh, unmute your mic and confirm your vote. Gaines. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, I'm against this uh, amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Marat, you are now on screen. Councillor Marat, thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Marat. Councillor Juarez. For the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Juarez. <laughs> Councillor Conception, I'm coming to you now. If you could confirm your vote. Against. Thank you, Councillor Conception. And lastly, that is the chair, please. Against. Thank you, Chair. On that basis, the motion falls with the voting being two in favour, six against and one abstention. Chair, would you wish to move an alternative resolution on the matter? Yeah. Can I move that the recommendation be approved? Thank is you, Chair. Agreed? Thank you, Chair. Same process as before. Moving swiftly to Councillor Cummings, please indicate your vote. Just put your mic on, please. Councillor Cummings. Against. Thank you. Councillor Hansen. Oh. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Abstain. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Lavelle. Oh. Thank yeah. you. So you can confirm your vote again, please. Now you're on screen. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Lavelle. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, I'm for. Thank you. Councillor Marat. For. Thank you. Councillor Juarez. Abstain. Thank you, Councillor Juarez. Councillor Conception. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Conception. And Chair, please. Four. Thank you, Chair. The voting on this motion by the Chair was six in favour one against, two abstaining. Therefore, the motion is carried and the application is approved on that basis. Chair, as I indicated earlier, uh, we do have a maximum time duration for dealing with applications virtually, which is four hours, of which we now have just under 10 minutes remaining, and obviously a number of outstanding applications. So, I, I need we to carry help. on with Edinburgh Road or not? I think we have opportunity to deal with the Edinburgh Road item, yes, but all the others on the understanding that these will be deferred and we will convene at a later date to deal with those, if that's agreeable to members. Yeah. Mike, Mike, I need to leave the meeting now, please. That's fine. Thank you, Councillor Conception. Thank Hello you, there. Sorry. Can I just say something a minute, please? Um, you still haven't answered one question. What's very important to a lot of people what have stuff in storage is how long do we have now to relocate 
Pete, I repeat, locate, please. Uh, just to confirm, just to confirm, Chair, I've just muted all participants and remind members of the public that the opportunity to address the committee on the various applications has been afforded. In terms of matters outside of the control of the planning process, which would include the relocation elements to which you refer, we would advise you discuss that directly with your landlord as appropriate and other operators on the site as present. Chair, if I can return to you, please, if you'd unmute your mic. Right, so can we go on to 108 Edinburgh Road, please? Uh, John Crawley, I, I assume, is present, but I'm not sure whether you want to speak or not. I'm present, Chair. Yeah, I'd like to speak, please. My name is Joe Crawley. Just to confirm. Yeah. All right, then. Would you like to go ahead, then? So I, I believe you have our slides that I sent in a couple of weeks ago, uh, just with regards to a few objections that we yeah. had. Um, with regards to the HMO detracting from the uniform appearance of the conservation area now, we're not looking to amend this building in, in any way, uh, kind of like a visual impact on the neighbourhood. So, yeah, I mean, a HMO in a conservation area, people may think, you know, HMOs attract a certain kind of uh, tenants that may not fit in with the, you know, the surrounding areas. But we are a professional company. We've got many HMOs throughout the cities. And, yeah, our, our rents do reflect the kind of area in, in consideration, really. So, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to, you know, make a HMO here, but the rent will reflect the kind of tenant that we're looking to, to bring into that area. So we're looking more for professional tenants. It, it won't be marketed to, you know, uh, the, the student population. So there won't be any late night parties there. It'll purely be professionals that we're looking to bring into this area. So, um, yeah, it's so just with regards to the, the HMO. Yes, we do have HMOs in certain areas that do attract certain kind of uh, genres of tenants, but we're not really looking to kind of market this to, you know, uh, students or the like. It pure, purely be for the uh, professional market. So, um, yeah, I do. This, I do believe there's been objections to the um, the skylights we're looking to put into the roof of the um, attic conversion. We're looking to add to end of the road there now. I have looked on Google Earth and there are many properties in the vicinity with skylights in there. So I don't feel like like our application, you know, would uh, impact on the area, like a visual impact with the skylights. I mean, I, I do believe there's many properties throughout that region and uh, along Edinburgh Road and Empress Road that do have skylights in the front and gable and, and rear elevations of the properties. So, yeah, yeah. Um, like I say, we're a, we're a professional company. We've done many HMOs. We're up to about 200 properties now throughout the city. And uh, we've never really had a problem before. And I'm just hoping if maybe you could see fit to pass our application on this on this uh, development we're looking to do. Thank you. Um, so are there any questions from members of the planning committee to Joe Crawley, please? No. So in that case, can I have, we've got two objectors here. Can I have Councillor Nick Small first, please? Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Hear okay. Um, well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to um, speak on this. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of um, my constituents. And um, Henderson Fields is an area with um, around 1,500 um, Victorian properties and um, terraced houses. It's the largest extant Victorian um, residential estate, and um, we think anywhere um, in the country, certainly outside of London. It's a conservation area, and it's been recognised as a conservation area for around um, 12 years by Liverpool City Council. The essential problem here is you've got three bedroomed um, terraced housing, family houses houses that were built for families, houses that um, throughout that sort of the last hundred years or so um, have pre predominantly been family houses. Um, what we're seeing is a lot of these houses being converted into HMOs, either small HMOs or larger HMOs. Typically what's happening, they are um, two-storey um, houses with three bedrooms that convert in the um, living room into a bedroom and put in another two bedrooms um, into the um, in, in, into the attic. 
and um, that's causing lots and lots of problems. It's um, impacting significantly on the housing market in Kensington Fields. We've now got, we think, around a quarter to a third of all of the housing stock not being houses um, for families to buy or rent, but um, HMOs largely for students. Um, and, and, you know, I do think that... Apologies, Councillor Small. I'm having to stop you speaking at this juncture because the software we use for purpose of virtual meetings will conclude the meeting in less than a minute. Therefore, in accordance with the procedural rules which now apply as committee secretary, I would ask that members note that the remaining hours of business included today will be deferred and determined at a later date. Certainly our apologies, but we are limited by the technology and that applies for all the various platforms used for the, this purpose. We will seek to reconvene within the next week for the remaining outstanding items of business and that will be communicated to all speakers. But thank you certainly for your participation. And over to the chair, please, if I may. Chair, you can unmute your microphone if you wish. realise I got muted. I wasn't muted before. So I've only really got time to say to you, I think, thank you very much for attending. I'm very sorry that we weren't able to conclude all our business today, but um, there have been problems with technology because there are such a large amount of people that have to be accommodated in this meeting and it's also been live streamed. So maybe the technology will improve if these kinds of meetings continue for some considerable time. But in the meantime, we hope to see you at uh, the conclusion of the meeting, which, as Michael said, we hope will be within the week. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. And for those applications outstanding, those will be reissued with an invitation to rejoin. I'll do that at the earliest opportunity. And again, thank you for your time. It is very much appreciated by all concerned. Thank you, everyone.